tell you, some absolutely okay, crazy some crap going. What the hell did I do? Oh, I didn't turn it off automatic. Hey, Andrew, can you uh, reset all that crap? What a crappy way to start the show. I, I didn't turn the damn system off of auto, so it started just playing all kinds of crap. Andrew, can you uh, can you stop everything? How, how do you just stop everything? And, and if you can reset all the crap. Well, hey, here we go. Where the hell's Fester? You know what? I was I did because I was wondering where the hell Fester was. Roxanne walked in with uh, ample time. Uh, Froggy, you were here. Yes, sir. And uh, Fester's just vacant, absent. What's going on with him? Why is he the straggler and, and disrupt all of a sudden? Uh, he actually sent us a text message this morning. Oh, I, didn't, I don't have a text. Yeah, he sent us a text message, uh, and he you, sent it to you, you. You sound weird. Are you okay? No, just I'm weird. No, 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 no! You sound no, no, you, no, no, you, no! Your your voice sounds very. You sound different. I changed my voice. I got a new voice. Now, how, how does it sound different? No, no, you just sounded kind of strange. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe okay. I'll tell you what. I was lifting my phone. But you know how people always say that when you look down at your phone, it's like causes you to have you know those uh, neck wrinkles. So I was trying to look at my phone. Well, we like just this. talked about that. Yeah, we did. We just talked about uh, was it neck wrinkles and, uh, but what was the what, the what was oh, no. I don't I don't know. Well, we we yeah. talked about several several things. We 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 talked about the mouth wrinkles with the straw, right? And that whole thing, and and the new side sucker hook shaped straw that you put your lips around horizontally versus vertically, and then uh, we had something else with. With the uh, neck wrinkles, with uh, oh 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 tech neck, that's what it was. We tech we, neck, that's we did, right. We did a whole thing a couple of weeks ago on tech neck, and that's people like looking down at their phones all day long, causing like premature neck and upper chest wrinkles. Right. So I was holding my phone like this as I was reading Fester's text message, and maybe by like tilting my head back. Maybe it changed my my vocal compression. That was weird. No, you just sounded kind of weird to me. All right, so I have no text. That's weird. That's weird because he texted all of us. I have nothing. Do me a favor. Maybe it's my damn phone again. I remember when I went to Indonesia with Chloe, I came back and my texts were not working. And I had to go to Verizon, my provider. No, Andrew just sent me a text. Do me a favor. Uh, respond. Maybe it's the group text thing. I, I responded on the group. Earlier. Yeah, you didn't get that. Te- what do you? No, I have, okay. I have no. Oh man, I hope I'm not going through this crap again. Oh jeez. I just sent you another text. So do you want me to read you Fester's text so you know what's happening? Yeah. Well, yeah, because I don't have it. Okay. Hey, Andrew, did you get a group text involving you? Did all right. So Andrew did. Uh, I've got nothing as far as group text goes. All right, go ahead. What It says, I'm in the midst of a major emergency at my residence. Oh, geez. I need to tend to this matter immediately. I will most likely miss the entire first segment. All right, let's think. What <laughs> what qualifies as a major emergency? All right, and so I, the first I hope segment, everything is okay. First segment of the show, not yeah, the whole not the show. Yeah, not the entire show. Yeah, he's got a lot of drama going on lately. Yeah, the first segment of the show runs from 6 a.m. virtually exactly to about 6.07, 6.08 is what I like to target. So a fester, man, what a, just a weird day. Did you, I just want to mention a couple other things here. Did you see the guy that chased an ambulance, shot a woman, then chased the ambulance down? No. And then tried to run the ambulance off the road right here in St. Petersburg. And then we have this this maniac that went to the Florida Department of Transportation office on McKinley yeah, in with, Tampa. Mm-hmm. And he had like guns and ammo and explosives and wires, all, all kinds of crap in the car. I'm more concerned with the gasoline, the explosives, the guns and the ammo than, you know, just the wires. Well, but, the wires lead to, isn't that what you make? Bombs with well, and attach them. Well, you can. I mean, you know, I mean, wires could be a component, but I'm, I'm uh, the, the more emergent issues. I'm, I'm concerned about you know, <laughs> gas and guns. Mm, mm. But wh- why? The, see, it, it, no, it's like you. It's it's like you got uh, Roxanne. It's like you got something in your mouth or something. Oh, do I? Uh, no, I. <laughs> what is your? What are you talking about? No, I'm, I'm, am I hearing things? Yes. yes am I hearing you are. crazy? Do I have voices in my head going on here? What's going on? All right. You sound a little weird to me this morning. 
Maybe I, you need to stop taking LSD for breakfast, and people will <laughs> sound so weird. All right, so McKinley Drive, where, where the hell is that? That's not far from Bush Gardens and Adventure Island. Yeah, uh, it's in the Temple Terrace area. Oh, it's off of North 40th, yeah. So why was this guy so pissed off at FDOT, the Florida Department of Transportation, that he apparently called the main number and told the receptionist that he was going to blow the place up or something, or and, and that he was going to drive his car into the building and he had a bomb? What the? What's going on here? All right, so we got two weirdo things to discuss, and now I find out that there's no fester in the first segment because he has some major emergency, and I'll tell you what my major emergency is. I'm not getting group text messages. That's that's my major emergency. I wonder if your major emergency is more serious than Fester's major emergency. Oh, I think so. The fact that I'm not getting the yeah. group, absolutely. That is crystal clear that, uh, yeah, that, that I, I have a bigger emergency. So we have no idea. Fester did not say... All he said was, I'm running late this morning. I'll likely miss the whole first segment because of a major emergency at my house. Okay, I'm trying to take clues from this sentence. I am in the midst in the midst of a major emergency at my residence. The residence thing kind of makes me feel like it's a home repair thing, but then you couldn't really do a home repair What's in one house? segment of the show. Yeah, no. Right? I don't know. There's like know. something going on with the family. I don't know. Maybe he clogged up the toilet with uh, his morning, you know, activity. I, I who, who knows? Who knows what that yeah. thing puts out? You know? <laughs> it could be anything. Should, should, we, should we call him and just see if he's on the way? He's on the way now if he's going to make it by the second segment. All right. Calling Fester at 813-310-844. You got to do it twice. Oh, that's right. You got, uh, you're very observant. Thank you. No, and please record your message. Let me hang up and try again. Drama queen, this guy is. Who? Fester? Fester. All right. I don't want to say that. Maybe it's something serious. Yeah, see, now it rings. The first one when we call Fester always goes to voicemail. Hello. Yeah. Are, are you on the way or what? Hold on. All right. I'm on the way. Where are you right now? I am on the Howard Franklin Bridge. Get driving in. Okay, very, very right. quiet you're, drive. Yeah, you're not in the parking lot at F dot, are you? On McKinley? No, no. And do you know where that is? That's that that little access road where you enter the parking lot to Bush Gardens and uh, yeah. Adventure Island, where it stops at USF, and there's like a couple of Moffat facilities on that. Oh road. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Oh, I, yeah, I know, I know where it is. All right, yeah. so you're going to tell us, obviously, when you get in here in a few minutes, which will be the next segment, you're going to tell us what the big emergency was at your house that has delayed you? It's as big of an emergency as I could have in the morning. Okay. It, All right. It, it screwed everything up. All right. Hold on to that thought. Stand by. When we get back, Fester should be live in the studio. Major emergency, the biggest you can imagine when you're trying to leave as the house. Big, as big. As big, not the biggest, but oh, as big. As big of an emergency as you can have at your house when you're leaving to come to work. Is that what you're saying? Yes. yes. All right, well, biggest, listen, I'm I'm intrigued. I, I'm intrigued. I guess we'll find that in minutes. All right, drive safely. Right, we'll bye. see you in a few. All right, listen, I'd be lying if I said that I'm not uh, intrigued. Uh, it better pay off. It better not be some kind of a sucky deal. It better be a real emergency. I 6.09 at the MJ Morning Show, just getting rolling here on Thursday, and we are back in minutes. Okay, some better news.
show. It's kind of a weird Thursday morning, uh, just a, a barrage of just strange local stories this morning. We'll get to those coming up in just a bit. Uh, have a little interactive MJ Morning Show listener experience favor to ask of you, which I will reveal in just a matter of seconds here. But first, Fester has arrived. Fester is in the building here at 620, almost 621. Fester apparently group texted the whole morning show group saying that he's going to be late. What was it, Roxanne, that the worst possible thing that could happen? What was, what was no. his It verbiage? wasn't the worst possible thing that could happen. It was the... It was the, let me see, I'm sorry, you probably know Fester, oh, uh, in the midst of a major emergency at my residence. Right, this is the crisis, this is the text message, and man, something's wrong with my phone. I am not in on the group message. Uh, I'm included, apparently, but son of a, is, is my phone, oh, hang on a minute, hold, oh, you know, oh my God, I've got all, all these freaking text messages are, are coming I just reset my phone. What does this? I just, there it is. Uh, nope, not, oh, hang on. They're still coming in. L- listen to this. You could miss important stuff. I, I was going to put my phone up to hear the vibration. It's what all, what is going silent. on? Literally, I just had 30, it's still, they're still coming in. Hang on, yeah. let, let me, let me take my phone off of, uh, off of silent so maybe you can hear this. What is what is going on are, here? Are you having like five or ten come in? Dude, or are you having like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten text messages just rushed into my phone. What causes this? Well, I'm on Verizon. I've got a Google Pixel 8 Pro. Maybe if you got an iPhone. I, 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 I knew that, yeah. The, just the, saying. Yeah, 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 of course, you're going to say, oh, man, why don't you get a real phone? You sound like my kids are like, Dad, why don't you get a real phone? Get an iPhone. Because I'm, pe- I'm not part of the Apple iPhone cult, okay? Or our text chain. All right. So, anyway. So emergency is resolved. Right, so, all of my texts. I got to go over my text now. It, it looks like there's important crap here that I missed. And Roxanne... Your test just came in. Yeah. So Roxanne Tech, it, it looks like my texts, as of like the last text that I got was 2106 last night. And 906, 906 last night is the last text message that I got, and my phone's been all kermungulated, and then... I just rebooted my phone. I did a restart, and then I've got 10 text messages that just raced in, including I'm in the midst. Here's here's Fester. I'm in the midst of a major emergency at my residence. I need to tend to this matter immediately. I will most likely miss the entire first segment. Well, guess what? Yes. Uh, it wasn't most likely. You did well. miss the entire first segment of the show. So. Yeah. He, pre- he prepped us for that. What? What? Hey, can I get the Kill Bill emergency noise, please? What was that? That was that Ironside music. Remember, yeah, I, was, yeah, I remember the music, but I didn't know what it was called. Yeah, it, it's from uh, the old TV show Ironside. Yeah, here we go. So here it is from Kill Bill and Ironside. <laughs> All right, what was the big, huge emergency? At the house this morning that made you late for the show. I have a system in the morning where I know each step and each step gets me closer to out the door. And yep. apparently we brought in laundry last night, right? From the laundry room to we're going to fold it, all right? But it didn't get folded. Hold on. You brought in laundry? Well, we have a laundry room and we have a, uh, we have the. But, but you, you saying it, you brought in laundry. It sounds like you got a laundry room like out in the backyard. We have it like hooked up to a hose. By the uh, shack. All right, we stop no, it. So it, it was, laundry's in the laundry room. We brought it into the uh, kitchen because I guess okay. it was going to get folded on the kitchen table. Right. Didn't get folded. There's a pile of. So what does oh that God, have to do with. horrible. What does that have to do with you leaving the house to yeah. get here on time at six o'clock? Nothing and everything. Oh, jeez. Right, the laundry pile was put on top of my keys. 
Oh, you couldn't find your keys. Couldn't find my car keys. Oh. And I'm like, I put them on the table. Oh. And then my wife's like, no, you didn't, because if you put them on the table, they'd be on the table. I'm like, oh, that's a good point. So I start looking everywhere else. Who put the laundry pile on the kitchen table on top of your keys? Was that Allison? No. The kids? No. Y- you? It was me. Oh. It was me. You, wait a minute. You put the laundry on top of your keys? You're the cause of the yeah. dilemma and the major emergency this morning? I- Are you telling me that you don't have a spare set of keys to the 2010 Cadillac Land Barge? By the way, if your car was floating down the river up near Baltimore and hit that bridge, yeah, it would have also come down just like that freighter. That's how big and heavy Fester's car is. Well, the right. Cadillac uh, does have a spare set of keys. So where the hell were they? Why don't you just grab those? Because I wasn't to that point yet. I wasn't to the in case of emergency break glass. I can't have two sets of keys. So I'm a little OCD in the fact that if I'm looking for something and I can resolve it with something else, I can't move on. I got to solve the original problem immediately. So in your case, maybe I can understand. I don't know if this factored in, but let's say I can't find my main set of keys and I can still grab a spare set. I can't do that. I, I have to find the original because that's going to drive me crazy. Oh, See, I'm a, I'm a keep the ball and play person. Uh, where are my keys? Take two seconds to find them. Can't find them. Where are the spares? Just keep moving. Well, I'm sorry. Roxanne, you're just better than me. Listen, no, I know. You're I, just better well, than me. We know well, that. But that, in this case, I think it's just we're different. <laughs> we're just different. We can things. agree to uh, a key person that goes for the spare key and a key person that must find the main key. Can it coexist yes. happily? Roxanne is better than you. And she has different uh, dilemma resolution skills. A key. So it's it's a it's 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 a Spanish thing. A key right here. A key. A key, a key, a key, a key. right a key. here. Right here. The, a key. That's what a I key, said. A key. A key. That's what I said. A key. 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 Right. So, the key is here. A key. Yes. So it wasn't an awful emergency, like the house was burning down, or somebody was hurt, or 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 I heard you mention something about me clogging my uh, my plumbing. I got to be honest, that would have been much better. If... I I thought it was something like that because when it's like a morning emergency that throws yeah. everything off, well, it's, that's it's what a I, major yeah. emergency. You like, can't get here otherwise. I would have been much happier, like if your toilet exploded, if you caught the kitchen on fire. Yeah, that would have been much. Wow, what a downer. <laughs> next time, next time, mm-hmm. that would have been. Much. Hey, is Hal Herman going to join us this morning, Froggy? Oh, I haven't heard from him. I know he went on a bender last night. All right, listen. um, We got to see. Hal Herman headlines this morning about 8 o'clock. Oh, yeah, getting geared up. Hal Herman with the news. And, of course, just a little disclaimer. Whatever Hal Herman delivers in his news is completely false. (laughs) Well, you really have to lay that out there, don't you? <laughs> Jesus, give me a break. Well, I, I'm just saying. How about you just do the bit? I'm saying just don't get your news from Hal Herman, mm-hmm. all right? And that'll happen at 8 o'clock this morning here on the MJ Morning Show. All right, I got a great pile of early morons in the news coming up. We've got the Cash Kitty back at 8 o'clock. Listen for the next word to text or enter on the app or the website. So at 8 o'clock this morning, the Cash Kitty has another $1,000 that you could win. And it happens multiple times a day, 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m., and 5 p.m. Cash Kitty all day long here on Q105 for the foreseeable future every single day. So a little listener interactive question. Just a little market research here. So for the early listeners, I'd love you to weigh in on this because we've got people that listen cover to cover to the whole show. We have people that uh, catch up on the podcast or MJTV later on. My question is this, and I, I don't ask much of you. If you've never emailed me or the show, I'd like you to email, and this is going to take you one minute. The question I have is, Would you like the MJ Morning Show in this current form with all of our material? Would you like us to continue after 9 o'clock? Or would you like us to end the show at 9 and for there to be all music, you know, like regular Q105 music at 9 o'clock? 
What? I'm, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm just I'm just asking. Do you want the MJ Morning Show to continue in the nine o'clock hour? So basically, the show would just be from six to nine. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, that's and that, that's I guess an easier, more succinct way to put it. A thank, bit. thank you, Froggy's Mister Succinct over here. What's <laughs> what's going a on? Bit. All right. So email me. All I need to know is uh, where you live and are you male, female, and how old are you? Would you like the MJ Morning Show to continue as usual till almost 10 o'clock every morning? Or would you like us to end the show at 9 and it's just Q105 music for the entire 9 o'clock hour? Just a, just a question. Just asking a question. Email the answer. Send it to mj at mjmorningshow.com. That's, that's it. Very simple. MJ at MJMorningShow.com. Just tell me your age, your gender, and where you live. And would you like us to end the show at 9, or would you like the show to continue as it is past 9 o'clock till almost 10 o'clock every day? Just a, just a question. I'm just floating a question. Just a little listener interaction. Look, you're the listener, and... I value what you have to say. So just send me an email, mj at mjmorningshow.com. You want the show to continue past 9 o'clock, or you want us to just end the show and just it's uh, it's Roxanne with uh, 13 songs back-to-back uh, -back or whatever it is? You're making it sound pretty good. No. Roxanne, 13 <laughs> songs back-to-back. -back. Well, I'm a fan. Or do you want the show to continue? Simple, simple question. That's it. All right? So send me an email. MJ at MJMorningShow.com. If you can't do it right now, just do it when you get to work. Do it later on today. MJ at MJMorningShow.com. Again, I need your uh, gender, your age, and where you live. All right. And just answer my question. So, okay, I, I'm working on my email right now. Hi, my name uh, is wait, Fester. We, I'm a 49-year-old male. I would love for the show to end at 9 a.m. <laughs> okay, good. All right, I sent it to you. All right, good. Wise ass. All right, early morons in the news. Next great pile of morons today and it's minutes away on the mj morning show hey i got a hot tip for you right here about your next major event
Here we go, 641 at the MJ Morning Show and the early morons in the news. What is going on with Jelly Roll also? I got I don't, I don't think it constitutes morons in the news, but I've got like two Jelly Roll stories. You know, I'm, I'm not a big country music fan, but you know, a couple of the big names in country music these days, uh, Jelly Roll, and who's the dude that was on Saturday Night Live that's well, really good? Hal Herman has a Jelly Roll story too. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. crazy. How how do you know what Hal, hold on how do you know what Hal Herman has coming up with Hal Herman headlines at eight o'clock? We this talked morning? last night. We're doing, oh, we're spitballing oh, some oh, ideas. Oh, spitballing, good old spitballing. Who's the? Was uh, it the, a Chris Stapleton? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was going to say Singleton, but it's, uh, it's. I'm not like a country music uh, fan per se sure. or an expert, but uh, I saw a profile on Chris Stapleton on 60 Minutes. Yeah, he's really good. Like I think in the last year, and the dude's amazing. I mean, that guy, I mean... What is that a, the one with his wife? Yeah, and he's kind of laid back. He's like a normal, yeah, regular... He's cool. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I just uh, wrote a song in five minutes for my wife. Yeah, I mean, what a what a cool guy. Anyway, so Hal Herman has Jelly Roll? Yeah, he has, uh, I believe, a story. He sends me, like, bullet point notes. <laughs> I'm sure he does. Well, what do you have <laughs> Yeah, what's your Jelly Roll? roll? No, I got a couple of Jelly Roll things. Jelly uh, Roll's awesome. Yeah, well, hang on. Uh, well, apparently he's getting sued. Oh, okay. Jelly Roll's getting sued. Who, by Little Debbie? And also, <laughs> well, hang on. What is the what is the topic of what Hal Herman has regarding singer Jelly Roll coming up around 8 o'clock with Hal Herman headlines? 
Uh, just, I just, think just, so, an incident happened on the American Idol set. Oh, okay, I don't have that one. No. no All right, no. so hey, maybe we have three jelly roll items today. All right, early morons in the news. Uh, this is kind of a novel deal. Let's come up with ways that you would rub a convenience store. All right. Wait, uh, this has to do with jelly roll? No, no, oh, no, oh, no. I, that's later. I, no, that's later. I got, I got oh. jelly roll because I said I don't know if the jelly roll items constitute morons in the news. I, I don't think so. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go round the horn here, and let's talk about ways that you can rob a convenience store. You know, this this is like the twenty five thousand dollar or the the hundred thousand dollar pyramid. You know. Can I ask you, a question? You, you know you. Yeah, go ahead. Why is it called around the horn? I don't know. Well, <laughs> yeah, I, good know, question. Are we a horn? Around the ba it's sort of like around the bases. You know, like first to second to third, home. That's like around the horn. Oh, like like in, in baseball practice, when you'd warm up in between in innings. All right, boys, around you, the horn. You, you, yeah, you throw the ball around the horn. All right, so just like on the pyramid, uh, formerly with Dick Clark, uh, now. Uh, John Davidson, don't forget. Uh, yeah, for all his cousins, John Davidson. And then uh, now the current version is with Michael Strahan. <laughs> All right, so just like on the pyramid. Ooh, I'm excited. Let's uh, pretend you're in the winner's circle. And, of course, you got to, you know, guess uh, things that would constitute how you rob a convenience store. So I, I just want to see if you guys, let me get my uh, pyramid music here. You know, let me put 60 seconds on the clock. Ah, there we go. All right, so... Things that you might use to rob a convenience store, all right, or ways. Roxanne, ways, yes. Ways. Okay. Uh, this is a little out of the box. Yep. But, you know, you don't want to be seen. You don't want your face to be recognized. So you go into the convenience store in a furry costume. Mm -hmm. And then oh, you. Uh, what, just, that's just, good. Just, uh, Roxanne, so, just, so furry that's, costume. That's and outside then of the box. Plenty of, plenty of space in your costume no. to store like a gun. And uh, you're gonna it's a really good a, guess. Uh, just, just simplify it. So you're going to go with gun? I'm going to go with gun and a costume. Yes. And, a, and a furry costume. Yes. That's very good. Like you go into Thank a you. furry convention in Las Vegas? Yes. Uh, no. I thought that was it. No. 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 Uh, so uh, things that you might use to rob a convenience store. It's not a gun or a furry costume. No, it's um, not. Whose turn is it? Yeah. A fester. Okay. Oh. Festers. Yeah. Uh, I will go with a knife or machete. Oh. Sure. Uh, good guess in like normal times, but no, no, no. <laughs> I think I got it. All right. Frog, you think you have it? Yeah. All right. If held correctly, a flashlight. What? Ooh, clever. A flashlight? <laughs> no, flashlight. The thing you have sex you with. Position right. it. What is, what is wrong with you? No. That, that's... I mean, it lights up, so it would be a flashlight also. Well, I guess this could be a little bit of a double entendre. The Ooh. answer I was looking for is a snake. <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed that in 20 years. Yeah. A guy robbed oh, wow. a convenience store gas station with a live snake. Put your hands in the air. Yeah, earlier this week, Reggie Cook. Reginald? What are you doing, Reginald? <laughs> Reginald? Dude, what do you do? Like, throw the snake at him or something? Yeah. Reginald Cook, 26 years old, charged with two counts of attempted aggravated robbery. Bond set at four grand in Memphis. I'm robbing a convenience store in Memphis. Wasn't that a song? Robbing a store in Memphis. Yeah, uh, yeah right. I that was, was robbing yeah. in Memphis. Yeah, Mark, yeah, Mark Cohn robbing was... a convenience store in Memphis. Big song, Mark Cohn. He shot somebody on Beal. Uh, yeah, there you go. That's right. So yeah. around 2 a.m. Monday morning, this guy, Reginald Cook, walks into a Shell gas station slash convenience store. And then he leaves, but then 30 minutes later, he went back to the store, demanded money from the register. The cashier thought that Cook had a weapon because he kept reaching into his clothing. After the cashier refused to open the register to give him the money, he left again. <laughs> 35 minutes later, he came back with a live five-foot snake wrapped around his neck and had a green backpack and shouted at the cashier, give me the bleeping money, while reaching into the backpack. Now, the cashier called 911 and pulled out his own firearm. You know what? I love convenience store clerks that are armed, like yeah. a shotgun behind the counter. Well, I you follow know? a whole YouTube, YouTube page yeah, about that. I think uh, they all should be That's armed. I love convenience store employees that fight back, and then the, the robber runs out like in 
panic or terror. You know, I think officially the police tell you don't fight back. Just give them the money. You know, so the whole deal doesn't go all south and sideways on you. It'd be funny if like the cash or the cashier took out like another snake. Yeah. <laughs> or a hawk or something, yeah. something to kill the snake. Yeah. You know, cool. it, it, it's like, you know, one upping on the snake. You know, it's like <laughs> a golden eagle. Yeah. You know, it's like <laughs> check versus checkmate, you know, <laughs> you know, in chess. Yeah. Well, one person pulls out what? A, a water moccasin yeah. or, or a copperhead. Yeah. Oh. And, then, and then the clerk pulls out the black mamba from Kill Bill. <laughs> There and then the you other go. guy pulls out an anaconda. Or, or you could like go. No, 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 no. An anaconda is not poisonous. Well, they could wrap you up and choke yeah. oh, yeah. you. Yeah. 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 Or really yeah. make you feel yeah. uncomfortable. Pull out a fish tank and have a piranha in it. I see your water moccasin and I raise you <laughs> the black mamba from Kill Bill Volume 1. <laughs> Hey, I just Googled a story. You know, the rapper DMX, he used to rob people with his pit bulls. Really? Oh, nice. Yeah. I love that guy. That's yep. a very effective method, by the way. Any chance that there's any story on Mr. 305? Pit he robs stores yeah, with yeah. his crotch. <laughs> I, I, I would like to see if Pitbull <laughs> robs people with pit bulls. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, Mr. 305 Pitbull's a pretty decent guy. Is he still Mr. 305? Have they changed the area code? I don't there? know. If he moved to Fort Lauderdale, he would be Mr. 954. Right. I don't know, but you I'm know? pretty sure that guy stuffs his trousers. Or or, or if he moved to uh, Palm Beach County, he'd be Mr. 561. Or Orlando, <laughs> Mr. 407. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tampa Bay area, either Mr. 813 or Mr. Uh, 727. Or if he moved to Pasco, it'd be Mr. 352. Hey, yeah. what if yeah. he moves out of state to Chicago? Hey. 312. Hey, no, 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 no. no. We got play. Or Manatee, Sarasota, Mr. 941. We got to hey, stop hey, it. So hey, cool. you, know, you know what? Fort Myers, Mr. <laughs> or Naples, Mr. 239. Hey, I forgot about that one. Yeah. We moved to like what? Cocoa Beach. It's 321, right? Oh, oh yeah. Like, and then 407 is Mr. Orlando. Yeah, he's already said that one. He's moving yeah. a lot. Hey, what about Jacksonville? Jacksonville's Mr. 904. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, doing. I'm sorry. Oh, Polk County, Mr. Eight, Mr. 863. This has to end. Yeah. It. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mr. 863 from Polk County. <laughs> from Auburndale. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, there you go. Uh, robbing a convenience store with a snake. With Mr. Snakety Snake. Give me all your money. Yeah. S- put in the sack. <laughs> That's just absolute. Bust open the safe. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Snake up. It's a, yeah, that's a good one. Snake up. You know what? Since I'm in the convenience store, I'm going to go get a Slurpee and a s- Slim Jim. Man, that's a that's hungry, good. thirsty steak. That's, that's right. a combo. 651 at the MJ Morning Show. All right, 7 o'clock hour starts next. We're loaded. Cash Kitty's back in just over an hour at 8 o'clock. Oh, Fester, yes. I need to uh, delve into your childhood. Okay. Do we have a couch I could lay well, on? Well, it's it's a health issue and your childhood. Hold on. We'll do that next on the MJ Morning Show here on Q105. Don't move.
Friday morning show. MJ and the crew here. Roxanne, Froggy, Fester, uh, me, MJ, Andrew, the producer, doing a fantastic job this morning. Just a, a click above yesterday. I, I don't know what it is, but our producer just, it's a little bit better than yesterday. Uh, so... Hope you're enjoying this uh, this broadcast crap fest every single day uh, here on the MJ Morning Show. Fester. Yes. Now, if I'm wrong, guys, if you think that I'm unfairly singling Fester out because of, I don't know, your presentation, your condition, just listen, you just being Fester. If you think that I'm unfairly singling you out, please speak up or anyone else for that matter because I don't mind being put in my place or or called out or corrected on something. But when I saw this particular item, I'm like, well, I just gravitated to you. And it's like a health and well-being story. And what caught my attention was there's a study out that eating junk food during childhood may lead to long-term irreversible memory problems. Hmm. So my question, and I, I don't know why I'm gravitating to you. I just think that you were probably, and probably still today, the biggest junk food abuser, user. He's got Pop-Tarts in front of him right now. Oh, hold on, really? Yeah, I mean, oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. I, 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 I have no food in front of me. I've got nothing in front of me. Got a little bag of blueberry-flavored Pop-Tarts. Froggy, what do you have in front of you? Anything? Coffee. All right, uh, Roxanne, do you have anything in front of you right now? Tea. And Fester's got a I, stack of Pop Tarts. I got Pop Tarts. Well, I got a double iced coffee here. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Maybe I was laser focused and right on freaking target here, huh? You know, you it, still haven't brought in a picture of you as a little baby fat kid. Yeah, Pop Tarts. Right, can I get a little sensitivity out of you, Froggy, please? Come on. Pop Tarts. A little are, fat kid? <laughs> Stop. Pop Tarts yeah. are not junk food. Yes, they are. No, they aren't. They're yes. breakfast. Yeah. Do you know how much sugar is in a Pop Tart? Pop Tart is not junk food. Pop Tart is grains. Pop Tart. Is junk, a pop tart is junk food. It's sustenance. We, no. Does it, it have? Uh, do we have any nutritional information on that packet, or just the tinfoil one? No, I'm sure it's on the box. It's just the mylar yeah. silver yeah. packaging. But of I wonder course. if there's any fiber. Any fiber? Probably. Oh, there's fiber. Oh, come on, it's in fiber the, flavored. Yeah. In the blueberry. <laughs> oh, you, speaking of fiber and, and like breakfast items, man, I remember. I don't know. I just remember this. Did you ever read? This is years ago. You know the fiber one bar. Yeah. yeah. I, I've never had a fiber one bar, but I remember that Michelle, my lovely wife, this is going to be 10 plus years ago, somehow she stumbled on like a discussion on fiber one bars. <laughs> and there was a whole thread online where people were saying that when they eat a fiber one bar, it's. It's like an explosion. It's it's oh. it does its job. <laughs> Those, are, but reading the comments about people, I wish I could find that because it was. Did, did we ever talk about this years ago? I don't remember. I don't know. I'm tr well. You wouldn't have been here. It right. Would, it would have been the first iteration of the MJ Morning Show. But maybe 10, 12, 15 years ago. But I remember the comments. People talking about the fiber one bar and what the bar did to their their plumbing. It was like some of the most hysterical stuff I've ever read in my life. All right, anyway, maybe we can find that thread. Back to junk food. We have new research out, a study conducted by the University of Southern California Utilizing rats in new research suggests that parents might want to start considering junk food items as bad as giving your kid like liquor and beer. Oh wow! <laughs> wow! No, sir, oh, come on, th that, dude. That is in the research. I have some friends that grew up on nothing but junk food, and yeah. they're perfectly fine. I bet, like like Twinkies and yeah, Hohos. it's junk. Moms and dads might want to start considering junk food and candy bars as bad as if the parents gave their toddlers beer and liquor. That's awful. Uh, brand new research from uh, USC out in California. They found that rats fed a diet full of fat and sugar 
during childhood and adolescence that they suffered long-term memory impairment well into adulthood. The study authors believe these findings show that a junk food-filled diet may disrupt a kid or teen's memory and their ability for the long term, just like in the rats that they tested this stuff on. Oh, man. Mm. Yeah. So, Fester, I got to believe that you as a kid were probably the junkiest of junk food consumers of any of us in this studio. Who are you? Where where am I? I don't recognize you. <laughs> Who are you? Why, why am I here? <laughs> where, where, where am I? Hi. Uh, my my memory is, hi. Hi. Oh, hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Fester, nice to meet you. Can, can you discuss your diet at eight years old and then 12 years <laughs> old and 15? Oh, man. I think, I think they were all pretty much the same. <laughs> Frosted Flakes every day. I don't know. I mean, I mean, I'm trying to think. I don't know. I had too much, an abundance of junk food. I mean, I don't think I, that was the case. I think I was always a volume eater. I mean, but just the point that here I'm talking about junk food and memory and new research, and you're the only one in the studio that has junk food in front of them right now. Pop Tarts (laughs) is part of this nutritious breakfast. (laughs) Yeah. Sure. I, you know, I struggle with all of this. If this is that bad for children, then we may as well just ban all holidays because Valentine's Day, Easter, Halloween, Halloween Christmas, they and birthdays, it keeps a steady flow of sugar, cakes, treats, candies. And my kids love that stuff. The only thing that's worked lately for me is I've kind of just been like, have whatever you want, have whatever you want. And now they want it less. Oh, you're doing the reverse I'm doing the psychology, reverse psychology thing. and it, it's kind of working. Or what was the old deal like the parents that would let their kids get like ill eat all of the candy you want eat the whole halloween bucket that you just collected and then there's like a mentality that if you let the kids just overindulge and just you know uh what is the word i'm like looking so for pig out? uh yeah pig out but there's another word i'm looking for anyway, but you let the kid just uh just binge bi- thank that that's the word thank you roxanne mm. you let the kid binge and then they get sick as hell and guess what they're not going to binge on the, yeah. the, the candy again. Anyway, Fester, I just thought it was interesting that junk food, new research, uh, kids, teenagers, long-term potential memory loss oh, yeah. into adulthood. And oh. then, I don't know if you saw this, but the list could be growing as far as, you know, speaking of junk food and popular snacks, I think the worst state in the country is, you know, California. Because doesn't California already ban uh, a bunch of additives? And there's like a list of well-known foods that could be further banned in California and and other states. And some are already banned as far as uh, ingredients in foods. So... And it's because of uh, cancer-causing additives and chemicals. But, you know, it gets a little squirrely because a lot of times, you know, they they test on lab rats and, oh, it causes cancer. But then you find out that you had to eat like 10,000 of these a day, well, you know, to get to a level of it being bad for you. So some of the foods in question, listen to this. And these are foods that everyone is aware of and and many people eat, and certainly their kids are eating this stuff. But some snacks and classic candies and even breakfast cereals in several states could be banned because of ingredients. The list includes Lucky Charms, Fruit Mm. Loops, candies like Skittles, Nerds, M&Ms, and oh my God... Swedish fish. Yo. Oh, those are good. Oh, I, I, Swedish fish. One of my. Fa- I love the Coca Cola gummies. You know uh-huh. the the Haribo cola gummies. Not on the list, but I love Swedish fish. I'm a huge Swedish fish fan. Swedish. Uh, your yeah. your Haribo Coke gummies might be on the list. I, I don't mean, know. It's a lot of the same dyes. Uh, also, listen to this. Flaming hot Cheetos. I'll never go to California again. Gatorade <laughs> and other sports drinks are also potentially uh, going to be affected here. Yeah. So what's the story? These chemicals in the foods 
a lot of the foods we eat, a lot of these chemicals are already banned across the pond over in Europe. Mm. And now we've got numerous states are joining in. So I remember we talked about this. Back in October, California passed that Skittles ban, which outlawed chemicals and ingredients in foods that are known to be carcinogenic in some fashion. Uh, Chemicals like bromated vegetable oil, potassium bromate, uh, propyl paraben, and red dye number three. Uh, Potassium bromate is used to strengthen the texture of bread, but it's a known carcinogen in rats. May cause kidney issues. Uh, Sarah Lee cinnamon rolls. Mm. Bromated vegetable oil, which is used to keep citrus from rising to the top in beverages, has a toxic effect on the thyroid. A lot of orange soda. That used to be in Mountain Dew, and I guess they Mm. pulled that out some years ago. But the bill is set to go into effect in 2027. That applies to California, but you have other states that are looking into these additives And you hear, you know, these names uh, of these foods that are just Lucky Charms and and Fruit Loops and Skittles and Nerds and M&Ms and Swedish Fish, Flaming Hot Cheerios. Cheetos. Uh, 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 Flaming Hot Cheerios would be a new flavor. Oh, my God. That is a Flaming Hot Cheerios. Ooh, that would be good. Oh, man. Your your milk turns orange. You you burn your kids' faces (laughs) off at breakfast time with Flaming Hot Cheerios. No, but seriously, heads up on this because other states are starting to uh, like raise an eyebrow and might follow suit. So is this going to cause these companies to find alternatives that don't use potentially dangerous chemicals and additives? I don't doubt that all this stuff is not good for you, yep. but I do have to go back to the mice and rats for a moment, MJ. Yep. They are very prone to tumors. When I was like eight years old, I had a mouse named... Uh, Coco and one named Ruby. Coco died of neck tumors, and Ruby died of tumors on her hips. Jeez. So and, they're and very prone it. to that. I never. Yeah. That's environmental. She fed them nothing but equal packets. <laughs> yes. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Look at it. and and Roxanne's little pet rodents are making uh, uh, an appearance from, from the, the afterlife. From the afterlife. <laughs> Roxanne. <laughs> It's me. What what were your rat's names? And- Coco and Ruby. Coco and Ruby? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, poor thing. They fought hard. <laughs> All right, 715 at the MJ Morning Show. Oh, everything you wanted to know about the junk food and, and additives. But listen, if some of these additives are dangerous or even if uh, even in large amounts, I mean, do you really want to ingest this stuff? Maybe they can find alternatives to uh, known carcinogens. But listen, there's also the argument that you have to consume such a ridiculous amount that it's never going to affect your health. But hey, you know, I get a TV set in a box and I got a warning on the box saying that California says this TV set's going to give me cancer. Right? I'm like, what the hell? Whoa. I'm not eating the TV set. <laughs> All right. Seven, seven. It's like proposition, uh, whatever it is. Uh. And it's some proposition in California. 716 at the MJ Morning Show. We start an hour and 20 minutes of nonstop MJ next. Also, I mentioned this earlier. I want to, again, bring up the future of the MJ Morning Show and something that I would like your help with. This is very, very important. And I want to discuss this next, among many other things. Are you going to take calls on that, too? Uh, I, no, not right away. Oh, okay. Not, not right but this is important. Folks, we got Hal Herman coming up. Oh, did you see the uh, video with uh, Chloe and me at uh, Chipotle last night? Man, I... I did some math last night. Holy friggin' moly. You got to hear this. Stand by. We're back in minutes on the MJ Morning Show here on Q105. And I want to give you a, a very important recommendation. If you have a home...
It is rolling up on 727, and right now we start an hour and 20 minutes of nonstop MJ. Here we go. Boom. One hour, 20 minutes plus. Let's be honest here. I, I always give you more. I never give you less. So at least an hour and 20 minutes of nonstop MJ right now. Some bizarre stuff, and I'm going to need your help on something. Just give me a, a couple of minutes here, and I'm going to need your help on something. It, it's very simple. It, it's not going to put you out. It's not going to take a lot of time. Just it got, a, got a question that I need to pose to you, and I, I just really would appreciate a response. Just a little, a little research, a little market research here on the MJ Morning Show. So how can you help us? Listen, we, we give. We give, give, give to you every day. I'm just asking for just something very, very tiny. It's going to take you one minute total to do this. I'll tell you in just a matter of moments. Uh, I don't know what's going on, but we are continuously now just like Wacko Central here in the Tampa Bay area. Yeah. I mean, it's always been this way. I mean, Florida in general, that's where, you know, the whole Florida man thing, which, I mean, the whole Florida man, that's overplayed. You know, Florida man. I mean, that's just. It's that, kind of cheesy yeah, at this just, point. Just the name, the, oh, Florida man. We get it. And it all derived from all the crazy stories of a uh, Florida man. Da, 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 da. That's where it comes from, a Florida man. But just the, the name, it's just, it's it's almost, um, it's, it's just. Cliche. It's, it's, it's cliche, jump the shark. But I'll tell you what. It just seems that the wackiness, the idiocy, the off-the-wall crap is just exponentially increasing locally. Uh, case in point, two items in the last 24 hours. You had a dude drive to the Florida Department of Transportation office on McKinley near Bush Gardens, Adventure Island. The guy drove into the parking lot but first called the front desk at FDOT, the Florida Department of Transportation, and said that he had a bomb and that he was going to smash his car through the building. Jeez. So, obviously, this guy was pissed off at FDOT. What? Were they, like, eminent domaining his house or something or taking a, a 12-foot sliver from his side yard for, like, a, a lane expansion? I mean, why was this guy so pissed at F dot, it's a crazy story. Here are the details. So this guy calls F dot. The receptionist picks up the phone. Uh, Roxanne, pretend you're the receptionist at F dot. Ring, 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 ring. Hello, F dot. May I help you? How can I help you today? Why does she have a freaking <laughs> British accent? <laughs> they, they hire all kinds of people at F dot. Uh, well, why would you just come <laughs> against my accent? Yeah. Yes, may I help you? <laughs> the British lady's not answering the phones at F dot. Yeah, she is. You don't know that. She's she's come over here across the pond. <laughs> Ready to start her new life in America. Hello. Have you heard about Harry? <laughs> She's starting her new life working for the Department of Transportation. So this yes. guy goes to the parking lot yesterday afternoon after calling FDOT and saying, hey, I'm going to drive my car and blow it up in your building. Well, the guy, he offed himself while, hmm. the, while the cops were approaching. Jeez, man. The, the guy offed himself in the parking lot. And a TPD found high-capacity magazines, multiple firearms. They found gas canisters inside the guy's car. Uh, this is all from a briefing from uh, TPD chief Lee Burkaw. Last I saw, they were still trying to figure out all the crap this guy had in his death wagon that he pulled into the F dot parking lot. Has he been identified? Uh, they have not identified. As of uh, when I saw this late, late last night, they had not identified the guy yet. Uh, other than he was in his early 60s. And they're going to release his name once next of kin is notified that he, uh, you know, blasted himself in the, in the, in the park. He was in a small SUV. That's what the vehicle was described as. And again, he was in the vehicle in the parking lot. Uh, off McKinley Drive near Bush Gardens. They're trying to talk to the guy, and he, uh, he shot himself. What wow. the heck? So I drove by McKinley on Fowler Avenue, yeah. and they had the whole thing. There were hundreds. Oh, so you were in the neighborhood yesterday. I, uh, driving down Fowler, wow. and uh, I saw all the lights. I didn't know what was going on until I got home and saw the story. But they had 
150 different vehicles there. I'll tell you right now, hopefully the story will unfold and we'll have a, a debrief on what happened. But I got a hundred bucks on the table that this guy was beefed off at something that F dot did. Whether they, you know, again, took part of his front yard to do a lane expansion on some state road or, you know, so, this, this guy had some freaking issue with the Florida Department of Transportation. He was I, just a nut. I, I was getting really fed up with the 4th Street uh, ramp being closed for three plus years. They they finally opened that up. I was about to go all, uh, oh. you know, I was about to go all postal. It's like a whole new world. I'm kidding. Don't say that. They'll, uh, they'll, they'll come over uh, and visit uh, right now. Uh, I'm real sensitive uh, to that. I'm kidding. I'm joking. All right, maybe, <laughs> maybe not the right time to say it. <laughs> But, again, crazy. And then we have the St. Petersburg story. A guy shoots a woman, and then she's transported in an ambulance, and then the guy tries to run the ambulance off the road? Oh, my God. Like Grant that photo. <laughs> right here in St. Pete. Cops have this maniac in custody. He shot a woman. And then once the woman was picked up by an ambulance, he tries to run the ambulance off the road while the ambulance is driving her to the hospital. Again, I'm telling you, the the crazy, the nut job insano meter, it's like it's hitting eleven here in the Tampa Bay area all of a sudden. Well, I think it's been building. Did he try to pit maneuver the ambulance? All right, St. Pete police said that. They got a call to go to a home on 29th Avenue North uh, for a shooting. This was like 1030 last night. And uh, apparently this guy and a woman, they were visiting relatives. Some kind of altercation happened. They start fighting. The guy then shoots the woman, critically injuring her, according to the statement from St. Pete Police. And then the guy left the scene driving a black Cadillac. That could have been Fester. Fester mm. has a black Cadillac. I was nowhere near St. Petersburg. Uh, well, anyway, we know it's not you. But the woman was being taken to the hospital in the ambulance, and here comes the black Cadillac. Starts chasing the ambulance on 275 and tries to run the, the ambulance off the road. What a menace. This is, this is a wow. mess. It's awesome. So then uh, police tried to stop the Cadillac, but then it, it took off in a in a high-speed pursuit. Then the Caddy then crashed on 54th Avenue South. Spun out, crashed into a whole bunch of rocks or something. Uh, and as of now, we don't know the name of that whack nut, uh, but St. Pete police have him in custody. But well, that's, that's some crazy stuff. All right. 7.35 at the MJ Morning Show. Quick question for you. This is going to take just a moment. I would like you to send me an email on something. Just like a quick question. Do you want the MJ Morning Show to continue in the 9 o'clock hour? So right now the show is 6 to 10. Actually, we ended about 9.43, 9.45, so we can launch the uh, 105 minutes commercial free for the workday. Would you be opposed if this morning show ended at 9? So the 9 o'clock hour, the 9 to 10 MJ morning show, what if it disappeared? And what if it was all music from 9 o'clock on? The question I have is yes or no. Send me an email. This is important. If you've never emailed the show, send me an email, mj at mjmorningshow.com. It's as easy as it gets. MJ at MJMorningShow.com. Do you want the show to end at 9 or do you want the show to go beyond 9 o'clock like we do now? Just send me an email. Yes, you want the show to go on or no, you want uh, 15 songs in a row in the 9 o'clock hour. Tell me what you want. I, I'm just curious. All I need to know is whether you're male or female, just tell me your age and where you live. Just simple question. Little uh, MJ market research here. Do you want the show to end at 9 o'clock or do you want business as usual and our show to continue to close to 10 o'clock every single morning? So all music at 9 or the MJ morning show continues in, in the 9 o'clock hour? Quick email. This will take you one minute. Just tell me your age, your gender, 
and where you live and whether you want the show to continue at 9 or end at 9. Just let us know. Send me an email, mj at mjmorningshow.com. That's mj at mjmorningshow.com. And I appreciate you taking some time out. I do. Hey, did you see this off? I mean, the worst possible thing. Did you see, and and I saw this uh, days ago, but now I have more details. Uh, I've never been to Mama Wana. Have you ever, have you ever been there? You mean my my you mean a city or a township? My, no, no, not my, not Why Mama? Why Mama? <laughs> no, oh. it's it's the restaurant that burned down, uh, in in uh, here in Hills or in Hillsborough County. Um, I, here I, we're actually in Pinellas County right now, but you know we all live in Hillsborough. But there was a there was a, a horrible fire at Mama Wana Cafe, and it happened almost two weeks ago. Is that the, uh, the, the the roof? Yeah, it's the thatched hut roof fire. Oh, and, with the waitresses. Oh well, now uh, we, yeah. yeah, now we know why the place burned down. I oh. mean, I feel so bad. It sucks. The owner of the place is Miguel Guzman, and uh, Miguel, if you're a listener, if anyone knows Miguel, I mean, I, I feel for you, man. I tell you what, uh, Miguel, as soon as you got, uh, or as soon as you have. Uh, Mama Juana reopened. Uh, we'll make a big deal out of your reopening. But Mama Juana had to close down because there was a fire that broke out in the Tiki Hut. And you had tons of uh, guests, you know, diners, you know, patrons that had to flee the place because the place was on, on fire. Mama Juana not get burned. Yeah, so Miguel Guzman, the owner... Uh, I saw an interview with him, and he said, man, this was just a total, complete nightmare. Oh. What happened was it was a birthday celebration. And if you look at some of the videos that they have online or you go to their website, they make a big deal out of celebrations and birthdays, and they bring out, like, sparklers. So they have the indoor area of the restaurant, but then they have, like, an outdoor, like, a, a thatched hut, you know, with, like, like, the roof is made of palm fronds, like a, like a hut on Gilligan's Island or something. Yeah. Okay. Do they fire treat those? I mean, like a tiki would, bar. Is there like flame retardant? Can you say retardant anymore? No, you or is can't. That, or is that, has, has flame retardant been banned? I don't it, know. It, it is, that, the, is that the R word? Yeah. It's right. flame touched. So nobody thought this is a bad idea? Well, the sparklers inside, I don't think it's any issue. But right. Outside and the place, I'm looking at the video inside. The place looks really nice. What's the address? Go to the find the the address. Uh, Mama Wana Cafe uh, on Anderson Road. So Roxanne, it's up in your neck of the woods. Uh, I didn't. I wasn't aware of that. Yes. Okay. Is, uh, is this in the movie theater parking lot? Is yeah. that is it, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Is it right in the AMC? AMC Veterans Movie Theater parking lot. So yeah. right next to uh, Veterans Twenty Four. Yeah the the theater. But can you imagine birthday celebration? And here's what happened: they're bringing out the sparklers uh, in the thatched roof outdoor like deck dining area, and the servers are doing the the happy birthday procession, I guess. And one of the waitresses or servers is holding the sparklers high in the air, and it lights the thatched roof on fire. You know the the wow. the palm fronds or whatever the hell that stuff is. And the thing goes up like a tinderbox. It's like a scene at a backdraft or something. It was like, oh my god! You know, just hang on. Where's your flames? Yeah, I, I, I hit the button. It didn't, it didn't work. Is I, it open? There, now Whoa. it's working. The whole place. And before you know it, the place is fully involved. Uh, Hillsborough County Fire and Rescue. They uh, they respond in mass. But, man, how would you like to be the server that burned the restaurant down? Oh, no. You know? That was... That's got to suck. This has been, like, a couple of different restaurants over the last two decades. I think it was Green Iguana at one point. Yeah, I, I think it was. And I was there when it, I think it was. And I, I was at that place when it was Green Iguana. Hey, and every th- time you're I, at that. I think the Green Iguana on West Shore in yeah. South Tampa, I think they have, like, a thatched roof there as well. Yeah. It's a whole thing. Yeah. yeah. And every time I sat under this roof, I looked up and I was like, man, someday this is going to catch fire. 
The roof, the roof, the <laughs> roof is on fire. We, we don't, don't need no water. All right, let's let's just stop right finish here. It rocks. Yeah, let's MJ. just stop. I don't have yes, finish. frog. What time is? Uh, do you want to do Hal Herman? Yeah, Hal Herman is like uh, you know seven fifty five eight o'clock. Okay, I got to go get his jacket. I mean, I got to go get him. <laughs> Where's the jacket? Uh, he is outside in the back by my truck. <laughs> oh, does, oh does, okay. Does Hal know what Froggy did yesterday? What I do with your butt. Oh, that's a pretty hot topic <laughs> over on your IG, huh? Oh, that yeah. is, uh, yeah. let, Let's address that quickly. Let me, okay. just, let me just finish up with the story. So they demolished the Tiki Hut at the Mama Wana yesterday, and I'm hoping that the Guzman, the owner, I'm hoping that he can rebuild quickly or, or, or open up because I don't think the inside, I don't know how much damage was to the inside, but the, I guess the outside Tiki Hut was, oh, and this is important. When they finally reopen, and hey, and uh, Mr. Guzman, uh, when you reopen, let us know, and we'll make a, a big deal about the reopening of, because uh, listen, I want to see a small business owner. I want to see a restaurant succeed, yeah. and it's terrible. The waitress, do you think the waitress got fired? I mean, it wasn't her, Ish. I mean, it was an accident, I'm sure. It still wasn't her finest moment as the employee. Yeah. But here's the deal. When they reopen, they're going to discontinue the use of flame-throwing sparklers for uh, birth, good for, idea. for both birthday. They're going to go with uh, LED lights you know? for the big uh, birthday processional. Nice. You just sing happy birthday. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You know what? The insurance company might require that. Is that covered? <laughs> Waitress lights your thatched roof on, roof on fire, burns the whole place down. Is that covered by insurance? Mm. When the farmer's guy comes to your restaurant yeah. and he does the evaluation yeah. of the risk assessment, do you tell him? You know, our waitresses walk out with many flamethrowers underneath this thatch roof. Yeah, you think there's like a, like an assessment, like yeah. a, a risk assessment. Yes. Yeah. They should use those candles like churches have that are plastic, and they just like sort of like, you know, the plastic fake candles. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, they know a thing or two because they've seen a thing or two. Man. Yeah. Mm. I wonder who uh, Mama Juana's insurance company was. Are you mocking my reactions, Froggy? I think he is. Are you mocking my reactions, Fester? <laughs> I think he is. All right, let's at 744. Hal Herman's on the way. Froggy, why can't you bring the Hal Herman sport coat in so you don't have to leave the show? It's, it's not uh, it, it's the me. jacket. It's Hal. All right, whatever. Bring your, mm. bring your props I got to go in. get it. Should I go now? Where is it? It's in the back. In the back of it's it's downstairs in your car. Yeah, I leave it Dude, in my car because it's tried to be stolen and put in museums. We we, we have important stuff to talk about, and you're you're important to discuss this. I'll be quick. Jeez, oh, all right, hurry yeah, up. Oh, you want me to go now? Yes. Okay. Go, go now. Get the Hal Herman props. It's uh, Hal. All right, Hal Herman. Oh, uh, whatever. Hal Herman headlines. Minutes away here on the MJ Morning Show on Q105. I had a couple of things on my Instagram this morning. And, man, I'll tell you what. Chloe's like, Dad, no one's going to watch this video. G- guess how many views? I posted this at 9 o'clock last night. It's already It already has 9,000 views. Ooh, that's a lot. It is. 9,000 views. And this is kind of double fold. Chloe is uh, on the mend. Uh, if you've been following, I took the picture of Chloe in the emergency room at St. Joe's. Again, uh the St. Joe's emergency room on Saturday afternoon was was great. Dr. Howell and then uh, Amy and uh, was it Miranda? Marissa? Yeah, the nurses were great. You know, Chloe had, and Chloe revealed that she had an ovarian cyst. Very common. She's 22 years old. And she had a cyst that, so that's what put her in the ER. You know, we thought it was like an appendix bursting or you know, gallbladder, or I don't know, maybe she was, you know, stabbed in the stomach by OJ, but she was in excruciating pain, and we took her to the ER, and that's where they did the CT, they did the ultrasound, and they found, you know, out what it was. And so Chloe's on the mend, she's uh, almost back to normal, and then last night, after I did my nightly walk, she's like, Dad, uh, can you take me to Chipotle? Uh, uh, oh, hold on, no, no, I'm sorry, I screwed that up. Hang on, that. Beep, 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 beep. First, she said she was going to Uber Eats Chipotle. 
So initially, he's like, Dad, do you mind if I Uber Eats Chipotle? I'm like, yes, we don't Uber Eats. We we, Uber, we don't have Uber Eats come to the house. We live a mile away. Right. <laughs> we can go. We live less than a mile away. We have these inventions called cars. Yeah. We'll be there in it, no time. Exactly. <laughs> so Chloe initially says, yeah, Dad, I, I think I'm going to Uber Eats Chipotle. I'm like, no, you're not. And then she's like, Dad, uh, can you then take me to Chipotle? I'm like, yes. So... I shot a video after I put the numbers together. Chloe wanted three tacos, uh, carnitas. She wanted three carnitas tacos from Chipotle. And I wanted to see what the difference was, whether you go to Chipotle and pick up the three carnitas tacos, or if you have it delivered to your house from Uber Eats. So I I want you to listen. First of all, I asked Chloe, you know, how she's doing. The first part of, and the video's on my Instagram right now. It's already at 9,000 views from 9 o'clock last night. Haven't even talked about it until right now. So on the video, you'll see Chloe. It's the the last thing posted. Chloe's inside uh, our SUV. She's in the passenger seat. And I first I said, hey, how you feeling? And I wanted to thank all the listeners for the outpouring. So... Listen. Chloe, how you feeling? Great. Thanks to everyone that commented and was concerned about Chloe's ER visit over the weekend. You're almost 100% back, right? Almost 100% back. And yes, I wanted to say thank you so, so much to everybody who commented and expressed um, concern. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. All right, so that's Chloe. That's the first part of the video. And then I morph into the price comparison of... Chloe initially wanting to Uber Eats the three carnitas tacos versus us driving less than a mile to Chipotle on West Shore, right across from West Shore Plaza. All right, this is amazing. Listen to the audio and the math that I calculated. And we actually did it on the app uh, as if she were going to order the Uber Eats to the house versus going into the store. Li- folks. You want to save money? I mean, people are complaining about how expensive crap is these days, and people are blowing their budgets. Everything's more expensive. Food costs everything. Rent is out of control in the Tampa Bay area. Gasoline, everything is grabbing your wallet. Here, listen to this. So Chloe wanted Chipotle tonight and said, Dad, duh. By the way, it's Dad. Say Dad, not Dad. Uh. No, it's it's <laughs> Dad, not Dad, duh. Don't think I'm capable. <laughs> Can I do Uber Eats and get Chipotle? I said, we're not doing Uber Eats. We'll drive up. It's less than a mile to Chipotle. You wanted, what, three carnitas tacos. Mm -hmm. I want to point something out. Out the door at Chipotle, driving there, taking a couple of minutes, less than a mile, $9.75 plus tax, $10.48 out the door. If you would have done Uber Eats, look at this, 2015. So the 975 tacos went to 1270. Delivery fee is 299. Taxes and other fees 446. 2015 for the tacos that we just got for 975 plus tax. And then you got a tip on top, right? The, the driver wants what? A tip on top of that. So what was this? It was like $25 tacos that are 975 if you go into the store. Womp womp. <laughs> <laughs> and then she gives me a whomp whomp at the end. I mean, does she not respect a buck? I mean, why? Can you imagine paying more than double? If you're that close to the restaurant, get off your fat butt and go get your own freaking tacos. Remember uh, before Andrew produced the show, we had uh, Coop. Coop. And Coop would complain. His friends, they'd be sitting around playing video games all night. Coop was, a, you know, a Generation Z. He was like, what, 23, 24 mm-hmm. years old. And he would complain that, yeah, they just ordered uh, McDonald's and it was $47. I'm like, you know, remember? <laughs> remember? Yeah. They, they, you know, because it's, it's all jacked up. And if you're complaining about money and things being so expensive, go get your own tacos. Ten, ten bucks with tax? Versus 20, it was twice as much without the tip. Yeah, we can all do that math. Okay, a couple observations. I watched yeah. the video with, I always watch IG with no volume. Mm-hmm. And I was just observing Chloe. She looks, which by the way, MJ, you need to put up your words. 
You know when you match the words? So I can watch it and you have the dialogue going. Oh, I hate that. I like oh, that because I, I, I watch it with no volume. That's how you do it. A lot of people watch it silently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. The words so are always wrong. Put, <laughs> that's put the true. audio up. I, I hate... If you can hear... The words clearly. Why do you need the words no, because, flashing because on the like screen? Because I'm in bed and I don't want to wake like, them. It's like we're all OCD and well, you got to have all the stimuli going no, on. No, I, opposite. I don't yeah. want the sound. Sometimes but, I watch you in a public restroom on, on IG. I don't want your voice. Yeah. You, you make your living in the audio realm and you don't want the sound? I, I take a break. No, yours in particular. But no, everybody else's is fine. No, I'm just kidding. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. The, but the what sound I was, is our lives. Yeah. Yes. Oh. I, I switch my sound barometer. I mean, I yeah. switch my sound experience. When, when I leave work. Okay, Chloe is so beautiful. I was watching it without sound. She looks so much like her mother. Yeah. And what's pretty about her, not only her mother's features, but her mannerisms are 100% Michelle. Somebody commented that when the video got posted, the first like couple of seconds, they thought it was Dakota Fanning in my car. Does, yeah, that makes sense. Does yeah. Chloe look like Dakota Fanning in that video? Can we talk about something really is, hot? Is that, is that Don Johnson's... No, that's the hold on, hold on. Dakota, hold, no, you're no, thinking I'm, I'm of Dakota so, I, 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 Dakota I, 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 Johnson. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, Dakota, yeah. Not, who's Dakota Fanning? She's the girl for the vampire movie. Was that right? Uh, no, 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 no. No, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. No, uh, no. no, it's 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 the, the it's Dakota Johnson. I, I'm sorry. So, Dakota Johnson was in like the Fifty Shades of Grey movie. Yes, uh, correct, oh, correct. Oh, I, oh, I don't want to hear that. Dakota that's, Fanning. That's creepy. No, it was it was Dakota Johnson. I'm sorry. So somebody commented. In the comments left on the video on my Instagram, someone said, hey, I thought that was Dakota Johnson. Yeah, not not Dakota Fanning. She'd like to get whipped in the boobs in a red room. All right, we can, <laughs> Freud, we can knock it off, please. All right, That's folks. That's in the movie. If you want to see the Chipotle, go pick it up yourself versus the Uber Eats comparison. Oh, come on, you and boomer. Can you listen to what you sound like? Just stop I'm, right now. I'm not and a you, boomer. How long did it take you to go to the store, get the products, and come back? Ten minutes. How much is, how much is time? Listen, how much is your time? Oh worth? come on! How much is your time worth? Fester. Everything has a right. price. How much is your time worth? It's not worth me paying more than twice the amount for three freaking okay. tacos. Listen, in a pinch, I get it. It's all right. If somebody's working at home or something, and they need want some quick yeah. food. If you want to see the video and all the other crap on my Instagram, so we got to talk about the other the main crap. All right, hold on uh-huh. a minute. Hang on. We'll get to that also, and then we got uh, Hal Herman headlines coming up in just a matter of minutes. But uh, my Instagram is Certified MJ Radio. So uh, check out my Instagram. See Chloe's uh, video in the car last night. Certified MJ Radio is my Instagram. And give me a follow if you so desire. Certified MJ Radio. And it's already like at 9,000 views. The video was a little awkward, though. Why, why was the video off? I don't know. Are you directing Chloe what to say? See, that's why I, it's better when you watch it with the sound down. Hold on. What, what do you mean? I, I didn't direct I mean, you're her. just like, it's da, da, da. No, it, no, I'm complaining. Be sh- like, she probably didn't want to do that. You probably made her do it, I right? did not. What are you talking about? Why? You, she wanted to do that? Wanted to do what? <laughs> the video? Oh, no. She didn't want to do the video. That's what I'm saying. No, 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 no. She didn't want, but I didn't tell her what to say. No, but she, but she made her do the video. No, she didn't, she didn't want me to, Dad, it's embarrassing. I don't want you to, I don't, she, oh. oh you oh, could tell and, she was embarrassed. And, and I felt she, bad for she her. She said, Dad, that is like a Karen. You're, you're going to be a Karen. I'm like. Yeah, you me, are. Me doing a consumer alert that <laughs> your tacos are nine seventy five plus tax? How is that a consumer <laughs> alert? Versus if you Uber Eats it, it's going to be 25 bucks for this for the $9.75 tacos? No, it's much cheaper to butcher your own cow instead of going to a All steakhouse. Right. Well, no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's, no, in that case, it's not. Anyway, go go take a look. And and the whole dad, duh. I mean, right. Chloe has this habit of turning one-syllable words into multi-syllabic words. Dad, duh. How does she deal with her bangs constantly in her eyeballs <laughs> and, and, like that? And the other one is no, is no. It's no. And with Chloe, a lot of times it's no, uh. Yeah, so. All right, and what's Fester's the, annoyed. You better move on. Uh, I'm just pissed off for people named Noah. All right. Froggy, <laughs> before we get to Hal Herman, what was the other Instagram issue? Well, people are saying that my butt looks like the guys from <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> and it's got, like, a bunch of comments. Uh, here's another reason to go see my Instagram right now. Uh, certified MJ Radio. He's taking over the world. I threw Froggy out of the studio <laughs> live on the air yesterday because we were talking about these these Reese's... Macaques. Macaque monkeys 
in the Silver Forest near Ocala, whatever they call it. Sil- it Silver Springs Sil- National Forest. Whatever, right? Right, Silver whatever. Springs Forest. Well, they got a whole bunch of these monkeys that have, like, monkey herpes. Ugh. And we did a story on it. And then, uh, you know, Froggy wouldn't stop with the uh, macaque monkeys. And I, I had to dump him a couple of times. And I made him leave the room while the dump was building because we were off delay. I can't, I can't have Froggy in the studio off delay. Oh, so I had, to, I had to throw Froggy out of the room. And then Froggy drops his pants and presses his butt cheeks against the glass door. Okay. And I took a picture of this, and it's on my Instagram right now at Certified MJ Radio. Let me describe what it is like from this seat right here. I think it looks good. I heard you. Looks great. I heard you saying that, MJ. And I'm like, wait a second. Froggy is mooning us. I'm sitting next to someone who is as large as the sun. <laughs> I think this is the sun passing in front of the moon. Is it the moon it passing eclipse? in front of the sun? I'm like, no, it's an eclipse. No. I'm going to get blinded no, no, if I look. No, hold on. No. <laughs> Froggy is the moon and Fester's the sun. That's what yeah. I just said. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a lunar eclipse. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to get blinded either yeah, not way. A, not a solar. We just, we just had the solar eclipse yes. where the moon passes in front of the sun. Yes. I blocked the moon. Right. So it's a. Oh, okay. Moon. So my eyesight would have been okay. Yeah. You see how many comments are on this thing? Most of which pointing out Froggy's desperate need for ointment. (laughs) (laughs) It looks like you have diaper rash. I I might have been a little irritated that day. (laughs) That day was yesterday. That means you're today the same. You know, this does not happen like in the workplace in 2024. You know, this kind of stuff stopped happening in the workplace like after the whole Clarence Thomas, uh, Anita Hill deal. We keep it going. Uh, But... You know, this is like an a, an HR investigation. Wait, what are you Froggy, doing? Froggy drops his pants and presses his butt cheeks against the glass studio door from the hallway. Oh, it was just—I uh, was just showing, trying to do it to Fester. I didn't know you could see it. Oh, really? It's a glass door. So I quickly snapped the photo, and of course, exploiting it on my Instagram. If you have not seen this, it's on my Instagram at Certified MJ Radio. That's Certified MJ Radio. It's a nice looking rear, huh? Oh, jeez. Oh. I, I couldn't look because I didn't want to get blinded. I mean, all right, come on. You might want to see somebody because there is obvious irritation. I think there's diaper rash. Yeah. I think you need some. There's no irritation on the outer. That's all on the inside. Do they still make that desitin ointment? Oh, is yeah. That still yeah. Around? Oh, yeah. That's what you, yeah, you put on babies' butts. Yeah, yeah, that was around when I was a baby. Apparently, Froggy can use some of the extra thick. You look at him bend over and give you some bat wings. All right, Hal Herman on the way in minutes, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. It's 7.59. I'm excited about this. Did you hear that John Lennon's kid and Paul McCartney's kid, they're teaming up to release their own music? Yeah. Did you see how ugly Paul McCartney's kid is? Oh, we should stop. Okay, MJ. Oh, oh my God. God. Paul looks, McCartney's kid's got to be 50? He looks like how he fell from he? a building. 52? 54? <laughs> that is unfair. He vaguely looks like his dad. Yeah, vaguely. If his dad was, like, bloated. But <laughs> John Lennon... And Paul McCartney's sons teaming up to release their own original music. And I have a sample. It, Are oh, they good? Before yeah. you play it, it I know the sun and, sounds like. And, and by the way, it's Sean Lennon. It's not Julian Lennon. Sean Lennon's a good, yeah. good talented one. Julian Lennon, he had songs back in like the mid 80s. Oh, what sick. was that song, Andrew? Sitting on the doorstep. Remember that was a, a Jewel or. Uh, too late for goodbyes. Dun, dun, dun. Remember, there was, that was another one. Too late for goodbyes. That was Julian Lennon, but this is Sean Lennon and Paul McCartney's. Uh, oh, here it is. Yeah, yeah. This was too late for goodbyes. This is, I think, it's like a top ten song. All right. Anyway, so uh, I have a sample of Paul McCartney's youngest son, What's James his name, James McCartney, and then Sean Ono Lennon, John Lennon's. Son, Yoko's son, and they've put out music. Oh. They have a, a band called Primrose Hill. Why don't and, they call the Beatles too? Well, l- you know what? That would be smart. Let me play just a little sample. Okay, before you play it, here, here's a little oh sample. God, I'm yes. afraid this what? had better be good, or it's a total embarrassment. All right, well here it is. All right, it's mm. no right. hell, Herman. Okay, let's hear. John Lennon's son and Paul McCartney's oh son. <laughs> What do you think? Dude, Sean sounds just like his dad. 
I love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think it's awesome. What do you think? I got to see these guys. He really has the <laughs> linen voice. <laughs> it's got the glasses and everything. Is, is that a joke? That's a joke, right? Roxanne. No, no. That's, 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 no. that's what they're doing. No, they're a metal band. No, that, that's Prim Ho- Primrose Hill. Primrose, Primrose Hill. Hill. Okay. That's the name of the track. Primrose Let's get the pit Hill. Going. I mean, how would it feel yeah. to, to be their kids and be like, nothing that we could ever do could even come close to what our dads did? Yeah. It's going to suck in comparison. My, my six year old and my four year old love the Beatles and they love that song. It's been a hard day's night because I've been sleeping like a log because yeah. they think log is a, is a piece of poop and they think that line is oh, hilarious. Are, are you serious? <laughs> yes. Never heard the song. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. It is time for Hal Herman Headlines. But first, the Cash Kitty is here. Professor, can you Cash Kitty me? Meow. Thank you. Meow. All right, time for the Cash Kitty before Hal rolls in. <laughs> this hour's Cash Kitty word is earn. E-A-R-N. Earn. All right, so text the word earn nationwide to 45911. Before quarter after, that's 8.15, so you got plenty of time here. You got a shot at $1,000 cash right now, or you can enter it on the Q105 app or at myq105.com. Text the word EARN, E-A-R-N, to 45911 for your shot at 1000 bucks right now with the Cash Kitty. And then the Cash Kitty's back again with another 1000 bucks at 10, right after the morning show, and then 12 noon, then 3 and 5 p.m. today. But first, before we do anything else, it is that time. Ladies and gentlemen, Hal Herman Headlines. Uh, here he is. Glad you hear about this. I want to come in and if you hear about this. All right, can you get on the microphone, Hal? He wants you to play his song. I, I don't have his song. Is it in the system? I think you're going to have it. Andrew, do we have it in the system? Uh, do, I, do I have the song? Hang on. I got to go to my audio page here. Uh, I don't see it. I, I don't. I do not have. You don't play my song. I'm not doing no damn. Uh, we're, we're looking all right, for it. Hang on. I, here it is. Did you hear about this? There you go. Hey. Did you hear about this? Sounds like John Lennon and Paul McCartney's kid. <laughs> yeah. I wish they were as good as Hell Herman. What's up, everybody? Did you hear about this? Hey, Hell or Hal. All right. Yes. So, ladies and gentlemen, from Hell Herman, it's now Hal Herman. That's right. I wear the sunglasses because I am officially a rock star. With the <laughs> headline. Hal Herman is on your side. Your side. Screw CNN. Hal Herman is the most trusted name in news. All right, Hal, what do you have? Hal. What did he get? just walk out of the room? He, 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 he just walked out. I got my glasses. I can't see. Take your sunglasses off, <laughs> Rockstar. Right, yeah. yeah. hey, why don't you get prescription sunglasses, I brought Hal? you guys muffins, by the way. Yeah, I'm sure you oh, did. Thank you. Yeah, anybody want a muffin? Yeah, give festive. Sure. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Just dropped all dozen muffins nah, on four them. four of them are good. Four of them are good. <laughs> Just, why, why sorry about that. I tried to do something nice, and I blew it. <laughs> chocolate sauce Did everywhere. you capture that on video, him Damn dropping it's... the muffins all over the place? <laughs> Call me Mr. Uh, Butterballs. Butterfingers. Butterballs. Now, I don't think it's, it's Mr. Butterfingers. <laughs> Never heard that. All right, Hal Herman headlines. All right, I got all the realest and newest and hottest and realest news there is in the world. Right. Hal Herman headlines. Because facts matter. Yeah. All right, what is first? Did you hear about Taylor and Travis and where they were seen recently? That big concert. What's it called? Coachella. Uh, Coachella. Yes. That's, Co- it. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. it. They were seen at Coachella having a lovely, cozy time with each other, being very intimate until this is crazy. Taylor was struck with a bout of <laughs> diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> she was spotted sprinting to a porta potty. So she explosive. luckily now this gets crazy, okay? Listen to this. Hold on. Can I point something out? Yes, please. <laughs> Just like Kim Jong un in the movie The Interview, I don't think Taylor Swift uh has uh, number ones and number twos. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think no. she does She's not. above that. Uh, According to this story, yeah. there's a lot of number twos out there. And here we go. She was spotted, like I said, with the bout. 
Spotted Sprinting to a porta potty. She luckily found one and proceeded to, as quoted by viewers that saw it, Let me blow guess. that bitch up. Blow it up. <laughs> so Taylor Swift blew up a porta yes. potty. Now, for about <laughs> and Coach Shell. For about an hour, fans were heard or fans heard Taylor screaming in pain, oh, followed by relief sounds. And she would be like, oh, you know, relief. I'm so, I'm so. When she finally exited, fans rushed to the porta potty to collect. Why right, oh. stop? No, stop, stop right there. Mm. No, you're not saying that. How, well, you're that, not even, that, I'm that, not even that, doing that, it. I, I didn't I, say anything. I think I know where this is going. What, I don't. Know, don't. I, stop. You're going to let me finish the story or not? Or going to no. have to throw a muffin I, at your head? I mean, he's a real newsman, MJ. Let him finish I the don't story. know what the story I don't know where he's going. Oh, come on. Now, fans rushed to it, and they started collecting what they're <laughs> calling now online as Taylor Turds. <laughs> Stop it. $500. That's, that's exactly I where he was that. going with it. That I... That's why I try to shut them now, down. This is, now, these are no. they're popping up online for sale. $500 <laughs> no. a turd straight they, from Taylor's they, mouth. They, 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 That's a true that, story right that there. That is not a true Look story. Look it up online. That is not a true All story. All right. Now, that's going on MSNBC with Taylor's MSNBC has crabs. Hal Herman has the real news. Okay, next. Now, this is a pretty sad story. Next. Jelly Roll, he's in a little bit of trouble. Apparently, he was a guest, on the, he was a guest judge on American Idol. And as he was watching a beautiful performance from a talented young woman, he stood up to applaud, but he slipped. All right? And keep in mind, he's about 825 pounds. He's a big guy. No, no he's not. He fell on Katy he, he, Perry. He might be 350. He's not 825 pounds. He fell on Katy Perry. Mm-hmm. Oh, so Jelly Roll fell on Katy Perry. Whose insides burst out of her mouth immediately <laughs> and blast Lionel Richie right in the face. <laughs> So, it literally looked like a jelly roll coming so, out of her. So, her it's her to death. Are, are you saying that yes. Katy Perry is deceased? Yeah, all, Luke Bryan got some of her innards all over him as well. <laughs> no. Ryan Seacrest was seen in the corner projectile vomiting no, he was as the not. incident happened. No, he was not. It's being investigated right. as we speak. None of this is accurate. This poor is... jelly roll and poor Katy Perry. More Americans get their news from Hal Herman than from any other source. Ah, well, right. they, they should mm-hmm. not. <laughs> all right, next, Hal Herman has... Headline. Have you heard about this? Abby and Brittany Hensel, the lovely twins that are conjoined, I guess? The conjoined twins, yes. Yes, okay. Yeah. Now, they are conjoined twins, and they are super sexy, and they started a steamy OnlyFans page. Have no, you heard they, about this? They did not. Have you heard about this? The conjoined twins did not start an OnlyFans mm, page. They should. A couple of their most popular videos include... I don't know. I'm shutting this off. I, I, you I, can't I, shut it off. I, it's just I cannot let this proceed. But it, it's the news. It is the news. I mean, I'm getting I'm thinking editorialized. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what did you just mumble? What did you just mumble? All right, here we go. Now they yeah. were seen. Some of their most popular videos. These on, are really on OnlyFans. Millions and millions of views. They have three hundred thousand subscribers. <laughs> they told the naked twins. Their first and most popular video. They're seen standing naked on a football field as if they're. A field goal post, you know, <laughs> and their husband kicks sex toys in between them. Oh, st- all right, and not, if he makes it, that is not true. They all have three some sex together. <laughs> no, they. Just, and then another I one do. is feeding both the twins a ton of epicac, like a, a bunch of epicac. <laughs> and then the you first mean, you one mean syrup of epicac. The first one to vomit on the other one loses. I, st- and then that <laughs> other one has to have sex. It's very hot I, stuff. I, and no, onlyfreaks.com. No, 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 I mean no. onlyfans. Onlyfans.com. <laughs> onlyfans.com. I, that is the field. Goal that is com- sex toy video that is completely erroneous, Real folks. Hot. That, Real is, that, hot. that is not true at all. all right. Fox News blows for the facts. How Herman knows. Ah, have you heard of this guy named OJ Simpson? Yes, we've heard of OJ Simpson. He is deceased. Did you yeah. hear about this? Yes, yeah. we, we heard of, We heard about that. All right, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we heard about that. I don't know much about him, but I heard he was a classy gentleman and has <laughs> nothing bad to say about him at all. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> hey, all right, I like that. Yeah. Hal Herman needs a laugh yeah. track. What do you think about a sitcom laugh track I for like Hal that. Herman? So OJ Simpson, class personified, I hear. Yeah. The family went through his final will and testament, and they saw MJ's last request. Uh, did you oh, hear about oh, that? OJ's last request? Yes, OJ. So not MJ. You, MJ. you said MJ's last request. No, no. You're not going to die for a couple of years. <laughs> OJ's last request. Yeah, you, you messed right. that up. All right. right. Good. I want to be clear. So, OJ left a clear note saying he wanted his body to be remembered like OJ's was in his heyday. Now, do you know what they did with his body? No. Oh, they flung it off of a wheelchair 
as the wheelchair went close down the stairs. Close. Yeah, no. naked gun style. At, at the orange they bowl. They wanted to go yes. even further back to when he was a superstar. I'm sorry, I'm sorry the, the Rose Bowl, right? Wasn't that yeah. what it yeah. was? A, there was a baseball game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. was it a baseball game? Well, maybe, maybe it was okay. Dodger Stadium. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we know what movie it was. Some, some stadium in LA. Ruining my story! Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> this whole thing's a mess. Right. Holy cow. So, go ahead. His friends, family, and kids dragged OJ's limp body through LAX airport, just dead. They clumsily tossed him over the Hertz customer service desk where he landed on his head in a heap. They tossed him over some queuing lines, and finally they pushed him, his dead limp body into a Hertz rental car, <laughs> and he was driven to his final rest of place, the NFL Hall of Fame, where he'll, his body will be on display. Was it a white Ford Explorer? or It was a or, Hertz or, or, Bronco. Or, or, I'm sorry, the Bronco's back. Yeah. Yeah. Ford Explorer. Uh, yeah, a, a, a white Ford Bronco Sport? The, yes. The, or or the, the big Bronco? Uh, when he created like, the trail of dead man slug was left all through the airport. It was a disgusting <laughs> scene. It's not but true, not true. his last will and testament were answered. And for those that don't know, OJ was the pitch man for Hertz. Did Hertz put out a statement when OJ passed? The old I, lady I, did that yelled at him. Go, OJ, go! Never heard? Yeah. Uh, is that the it? The lovely young lady. I got one more here. It's uh, just some recent celebrity deaths. Uh, more Americans get their news from Hal Herman than from any other source. Yeah, right, now, I think our producer Scott has some music for us. No, there's, our producer's name is Andrew. Andrew. No. I, I, I got that wrong. <laughs> uh, so recent celebrity deaths. Now, this is a lot has happened in the celebrity world of deaths. Uh, Justin Timberlake, bit by a rabid mongoose, died due to bacteria. Kitty Perry. Justin Timberlake. Dead. Because of a rabid mongoose bite? Six feet under. Mm. Okay, all right, Justin Timberlake. Uh, we heard about Katy Perry being squished by Jelly Roll. Right, right. Jelly Roll. That's awful. Yep. Ryan Seacrest! Yep. Fell asleep in a bathhouse sauna. <laughs> Dead! Could you believe that? <laughs> Kanye West fell off a carnival ride, the Himalaya. Did you hear about that? <laughs> Who? Kanye, Kanye West. West. Kanye West fell off the Himalayan? Head chopped off. <laughs> Travis Kelsey, another fall off a of f- f- fifth floor bar and landed on a spiked gate. <laughs> Beyonce got stomped by an elephant and a rhino while she was on safari. Elephant and a rhino. Both of them. Wow. Morgan Wallen's mullet got stuck in a Yamaha prop motor. He's dead. <laughs> That's not true. And that is Hal Herman's mm. news. Did you hear about that? <laughs> Who wants a muffin? Here you go. No, I don't I don't want a muffin. I'm not having I'm not, have having, a I'm not mm. having a muffin. I'm not having a muffin. I, I don't want a muffin. Have a muffin. No. Have, a have a muffin. I don't have, have a muffin. Have a muffin. It's a pretty good muffin. You want a muffin? It's a good muffin. You want a muffin? It's a good muffin. You want a muffin? Go! <laughs> he just smashed a muffin in my face. All right, here, I have paper that towel over here. Hold on. Somber. There we go. That was very towel. somber news at the end. Well, you know, it's appropriate for Hal to occasionally do an in memoriam. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Tragic. What are you doing? You can't treat MJ like that. What the hell? Uh-huh. I can't believe this guy who would do yeah. that. Oh, I mean, man, I got muffins smashed in my face. I hope forehead. that was on video. Hal uh, would like to, oh, probably would like to apologize for Hal and his uh, big yeah. good dilemma. Here, his, I, brought, so I really did bring muffins for you guys. His Thank auntie. you. Hey, speaking of Jelly Roll, what time is it? 8.15. 8.15 at the MJ Morning Show here on Q105. I love Jelly Roll, man. Yeah, so a couple of the... I thought you were going to go into like like some real Jelly Roll stories. But Jelly Roll's being sued by a Pennsylvania wedding band that has the same name. What? Are you serious? They're called Jelly Roll? Yeah. Jelly Roll is being sued by a Philadelphia area band that uses the name Jelly Roll, claiming that he infringed on their trademark and caused their business irreparable harm. It sounds like he would only boost their business. Yeah, Dude, really? he's been Jelly Roll for like 25 years. Yeah, well, th- this band is all livid and ticked off. He was a rapper before. What can he do? They have the trademark in the state of Pennsylvania. He could perform everywhere except in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. The lawsuit was filed last week, claims the wedding and charitable band Jelly Roll owns the trademark Jelly Roll and has been using the name since 1980. Okay. Wow. <laughs> they may have him beat. Four years before Jelly Roll was actually born. 
They've been doing weddings for 42 years or I mean, whatever. Is this like a band of skeletons that shows up at your... I mean, <laughs> We're the, here for the wedding. The band, the we band's, are Jelly Roll. The band's been around since 1980? Thank you, Jelly Roll. Sir, you better shut up or I'm going to strangle you with my microphone cord. Hello. That's like... That was a... The a, wedding singer. A line uh, that yes. Adam Sandler... Yes. Yeah. You delivered, delivered it very well. Now I am CA. <laughs> The plaintiff, professionally known as Jelly Roll, has been providing musical and vocal accompaniment for celebratory and charitable events, first in the Delaware Valley and now throughout the northeast part of the United States since at least 1980, including other notable events, two appearances at the White House for President George W. Bush and his family. Okay. Yeah, this is a lawsuit that was filed in Pennsylvania. Conversely, the- defendant who was not born until 1984 in uh, Antioch, Tennessee, claims in published interviews that his mother referred to him as Jelly Roll as a small child. See, now, if his mother would have called him Tub of Lard, it would have been fine, because <laughs> there's no band named Tub of Lard. Right? Hey, we're Tub of Lard! <laughs> All right! I need Celebrate a good times! Tub of Lard! Lard. Tub of Lard. Celebrate! Right. Oh, oh, who's Tub of Lard? Jelly Roll or the Jelly Roll? Who's Jelly Roll is Jelly Roll? Anyway, this, the suit says that Jelly Roll's name has caused confusion, and I guess their lives are ruined. Don't worry, well, he's going to drop dead soon. Well, I mean, they, God. So, <laughs> look Jelly, at him. Jelly Roll has lost a ton of weight. No, don't do that. He's going to lose his career. He is actually uh, preparing or training for a 5K run. Yeah, I hope they're preparing and re, uh, yeah. reinforcing the street he's going to be hmm, on. There's a lot of, and Jelly Roll's hot right now. Yeah. You know, oh, Jelly yeah. Roll. Uh, Prior to the defendant's recent rise in notoriety, a search of the name Jelly Roll on most search engines, and particularly Google, returned references to the plaintiff, the the band in Pennsylvania, but now they've been injured. Now it goes to the big tattooed fat guy. Yeah, according to the lawsuit. Well, it doesn't say big tattooed fat guy. Well, you but, know what you mean. Uh, now any such Google search returns multiple references to the defendant. Good for them. Wow. wow. Defendants unapologetic continued infringing acts and conduct unless enjoined by this court will continue to cause consumer confusion, mistake, and deception. Oh, what are they? So what are they saying? That somebody books Jelly Roll? I hired Jelly Roll for the wedding, baby. And, and they're expecting Jelly Roll, the, con- the country <laughs> dude, to show up? Is that it? And like four old guys show yeah. up. Yeah. Isn't, isn't there a the world bummer. where the two of them can coexist and still make a you would think. small would, income for themselves? I would think so. The band also says in the lawsuit that Jelly Roll's team had emailed the band to discuss a cease and desist letter sent by the band. Several conversations ensued, and at one point, defendant's counsel inquired as to whether defendant really was in competition with the plaintiff. The lawsuit also claims that Jelly Roll's prison stint for felony robbery charges has <laughs> harmed the band's reputation. Yeah, I mean, let's get something straight. At one point in his life, and maybe currently, Jelly Roll's a real piece of crap, okay? He's a guy. Oh, he's a wonderful guy. Yeah. yeah. So what, what is the band ability. saying? So they're saying that Jelly Roll, who did prison time for a robbery... That that's going to prevent people from hiring Jelly Roll the band for uh, okay. somebody's bar mitzvah? How can that guy rob anybody? Ava Nagila. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, that's the guy that robbed somebody a long time ago. He took their guilt. Can you believe it? All right, so that Jelly Roll's being sued. All isn't right. there another Jelly Roll? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, isn't little Debbie pissed off in all of this? Oh, exactly. She, she delicious- should be. Yeah, right? Yep. Yeah, for real. Uh, but Jelly Roll really is kind of new. He really became famous just after the pandemic. You know, in 2021. He's paid his dues, it, though. Is when his Ballad of the Broken came out. Mm. I only talk to... Ugh. I talk to God when I need a face tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> what, get some input? I talk to God when I need some uh, food. And then, uh, quickly, one other Jelly Roll item. Mm. I'm surprised Hal Herman, Jelly Roll. Yeah, yeah. Ha- Hal Herman did not have this stuff. See, I have the he real news. breaking Jelly Roll news. He killed Katy Perry. <laughs> he did not. He fell on her. Hal Herman is incorrect. But Jelly, this is actually positive. Jelly Roll says he's lost about 70 pounds. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. A- as he's getting ready for a 5K race. Give wow. me a break. He's not going to do a race. Yeah. Well, how long is 5K? Is it like three and a half miles? Yeah, 5K yeah. is, uh, yeah, 3.8 miles. Dude. 
He's doing a five dozen. Yeah, right. Oh, let me hang. On, let me let me look that up. I don't want to be wrong. That sounds you? close. Five. How K. many miles is five k? Less than three point eight. Three point one. Okay. Three point one miles yeah. is five k. Well, who the hell am I? Who the hell am I? Ugh. To run how, many, a 5K? <laughs> how many times a day do you think the average American checks their phone? Um, <sighs> 200. Honestly, a lot. That's over. That's mountain climber loser right there. Really? Yeah, you said 200? Yeah. Right over the side. Oh, uh, man. All right, so. In a day, eight of those hours you're asleep. So what's that? It's like, Listen, it's a lot. You're not far off. Uh, 120 times a day. A uh, little higher. Uh, average American checks their phone 144 times a day. You know, I check my phone. I don't even realize I'm checking my phone. Yeah. Like, I, all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, I, I'm checking my phone right now. I don't consciously do it. Yeah, it's become involuntary because yeah, we're voluntary. we're zombies to these freaking devices. You know, I remember a much simpler time back in 1990. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think uh, the other day. Literally, I was, I was thinking, what did I used to do when I was like on the can back in the day? My first, <laughs> like, what did I do? Uh, I stare at the wall. <laughs> what did you do? Right, l- listen, listen, did you read a paper. L- listen, listen, listen. <laughs> so I had my first cell phone. I had a Nokia car mounted phone, oh, where God. where they like drill the hole in the hump of your you know transmission th- and the big antenna coming out the top. Oh yeah, yeah. And remember. Back like in the late 80s, like 87, 88, 89, uh-huh. that was like the status deal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you looked for cars that had the little curly Q antenna sticking out of their back window. Yeah. And then right. you had that, like the phone had a curly Q attachment. Did you have didn't one? It? No, no, no. No, these are the car phones. The car phones. But people had the car phone antenna on their back window. Why am I picturing a car phone with the attachment inside the inside to the car you know what i mean well, it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a, the original car phones right had a coil that's wire what I'm like, like yeah. yeah it had a, a phone cord yes attached exactly like a regular house phone did precisely right so did i you have the portable one out of the one that you used to could walk around with no no the one that was like the size of the nuclear football briefcase i mean there Dude, was my one friend was, in grade school had one and he would order pizza in class off that thing all the time. And Mr. Belding got all pissed. A Tampa Catholic? No, it's no, saved by the bell. Saved by the Mr. bell. Mr. Belding. Oh, oh, oh. You're, is that some stupid <laughs> saved by the bell reference? He got you again. <laughs> oh, jeez. Anyway, so I had my first cell phone in 1988, I believe. I, I, had, wow. a, I had a Nokia. And I remember that's when they used to charge you by the minute. And people would get like... Sell bills like nine hundred thousand, twelve hundred bucks because they were tra- back back in the day. They were charging by the minute. So then, uh, I had my first portable phone, and it was it was a. I didn't have the brick phone. Remember the giant? Uh, my dad had the Radio Shack. You had to carry around like a five gallon bucket size thing <laughs> with a strap. Well, seriously, and I think you put it over your shoulder. My dad had yeah. that giant device, and then Motorola came out with the brick phone. That was, you know, the size of that military field walkie-talkie from like, uh, like, the, Private like the Korean War or something, or like a Full Metal Jacket. We need air support yeah. now. Yeah, the, 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 the giant. So, but I didn't have that one. But I had there was like a gray Motorola before the flip got small. There was a larger flip, and that was my first one back. In like 1991, I think, I got my first uh, portable cell phone that was reasonably sized. But the point is, we're slaves to these things. You know, I, I are we better with, with mm. these devices and, you know, all the apps and the smartphones? And, well, according to this research, Americans check their phones 144 times a day on average. According to a recent survey, I, I wow. my knee jerk reaction is there's no way that I check my phone 144 times a day. Can't you? Well, if you you don't have an iPhone, but I think with an iPhone you can look somewhere and it'll tell you. I need I'm, to hook up some device, and that every time I look at my phone or pick up my my mobile phone, it just kind of dings. Yeah. You know, up oh, there it is that oh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Anyway, I, I just thought it was just too much. I try to put mine away at night for to be with my kids, but it's easier said than done. 
Hey, check out this OnlyFans problem from Reddit. <laughs> All right. This is from the Reddit subreddit message board. Am I overreacting? That's a whole. It's, uh, that's man, a whole category. They, they've got everything on Reddit, man. You, you name it, it's on Reddit. If I've got a problem, yo, I'll solve it. <laughs> Check out the hook while the DJ revolves it. But no, if if I have a problem, I'll go to Reddit because whatever you have an issue with, whatever it comes to the forefront, there's someone discussing it or they yeah. have discussed it on Reddit. There's no doubt about it. I'm trying to think, there was something weird that I that something just happened then uh, it would i found it on reddit so listen to this one from the am i overreacting reddit thread my husband created an only fans profile of me without letting me know i'm disgusted i want a divorce jeez <laughs> listen to this sorry for the rambling but this all happened this morning and i'm processing i'm a fitness instructor and I'm active online to get clients for online and in-person coaching. My husband is in sales. Man, I smell like freaking muffin. It's all <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm like just breathing in my nose and I got muffin coming in. Since, I can't believe how did that. Since Foggy Lucky. smashed a muffin in my he, forehead. He smashed you with a muffin top. Yeah. All right, so I'm You're a right. fitness instructor and I'm active online to get clients for online and in-person coaching. My husband's in sales and is an overachiever. This always led to some conflict on our relationship as he hints a lot about things I could do to be more successful and make more money. About a year ago, I was telling him about a milestone goal I hit with my business page. While I was showing it, he made a joke about how I should start an OnlyFans page and could make a lot more money. I just started crying right there. It was like nothing I could do would make him happy. And then on top of that, to suggest I sell my body online was an awful thing to say. Okay. He did apologize and said that he would not bring it up again. And he didn't until today. This morning, he asked if he could show me something on his computer. Oh, God. I was shocked to see that he had created a full OnlyFans profile of me. He has been taking content from my fitness business and posting that to gain followers. So far, he made $379 this month. Ooh. He was almost <laughs> he was almost giddy as he told me that we could make a hundred thousand dollars easily if I put some work into the account. Oh, I was so incredibly pissed, I just picked up the laptop and threw it across the room. I walked to the door, got my keys. As I was walking out, I told him, I want a divorce and will be talking to lawyers. Oh, come on now. Calm down. Cool I drove ahead. around for a bit and currently am at a park writing this out. I'm reading reviews of law firms, but... I'm starting to wonder if I'm overreacting. I need advice as I can't bring this up to family or friends. It's too embarrassing. Am I overreacting by divorcing over this? Some additional information. I'm 33. He's 35. No kids. We do have a dog. I'm not sure if joint custody of a dog is a thing. I'm fine financially. I'll move in with my sister if I have to. All right, Roxanne. Yeah. You're the female in the room. Yeah. Is she overreacting? No, I hate that guy. He just sounds gross. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, that's probably one of 50 obnoxious things he does. So she, find somebody better. So you're all for divorce? Yeah. Dump him? Yeah, dump him. It's, it's, dump his ass. Yeah, it's creepy to start an OnlyFans page without somebody's consent. Yeah. Even if he managed it but she knew about it, that's different. Yeah, oh. and he's never happy. He's never satisfied. It's like, not enough. You got to... Uh, make more money, do, put your body... What? No, goodbye. Tell you what, I'll take a handful of calls. Yeah, some of the phones are already ringing. I don't know if it's about that. I'll take a handful of calls. That story of the husband surreptitiously, sneakily, privately, under the cloak of uh, darkness and cover. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the cloak of darkness. Putting up pictures on OnlyFans. Under the cloak of cover. Now, uh, <laughs> do you think that that is grounds for divorce? Or... Uh, Ladies, what if your husband started an OnlyFans page without your consent? 
and then says, hey, I've already made $379 this month, but man, if we really work at it, this could be a six-figure deal. What are your thoughts? Do you think this is grounds for divorce? Is she overreacting, yes or no? 800-990-1047, that's how you get in. 800-990-1047. Fire up the phones, grab a couple of calls on this, yes or no. Andrew's screening calls right now. He sounds like a loser. What's the, what's to be excited about 379 bucks over a month? What can you buy with that and in inflation? Well, the point right? that he was saying was, hey, listen, if we put effort into this, this can be a big thing. Look, there's a, it's a little proof in the pudding. That's what he's saying. So, listen, I, I got 379 bucks this month. You know, <laughs> what if we really put some effort? He's like, this is a six-figure gig. Mm-hmm. All right, so the question is, if you're a woman and your husband started an OnlyFans page without your knowledge... How pissed would you be? And I don't I don't think it's anything X-rated because he was grabbing material from her fitness page. So what, like workout pictures or videos of her in, uh, what, like Lululemon or spandex or whatever? All right, let's grab a couple of calls. Do you think it's grounds for divorce? And do you have anything to say to the husband for starting this OnlyFans page? 800-990-1047. 800-990-1047. Uh, Clearwater up first. Cindy, welcome to the MJ Morning Show. Hi, how you doing, MJ? Hey, Cindy, uh, Cindy, welcome. What's the story? What do you believe here? Oh, she definitely should divorce him. It's not going to get any better. I lived this life before computers, and my husband at the time, we had taken some, you know, intimate pictures. Ooh, yeah. And he was wanting to kind of get into the swinging stage, and I said, absolutely not, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, he was sending my pictures out to all these people that were swingers, and I was getting phone calls at 2 o'clock in the morning, and he didn't stop. And and I finally had to, after, gosh, probably five years, I finally had to leave. Oh, wow. <laughs> no money. And no did money. You, you ever look back or you just, did you? Div- Never look back. And Never you just, back. you just divorced him, right? Yeah. Just, I, he, he set me up with a, a, a lady, of, uh, what do you call it, a, a psychiatrist kind of lady. Yeah. Like, a marriage counselor? Side with him, and she told me, nope, move on. She goes, he isn't going to change. Oh, wow. All right. Cindy, thanks for the call. Thanks for checking in. Let's go to Connecticut. Farmington, Connecticut. And uh, Carlene. Hey, Carlene, how far away are you from a Frank Pepe pizza? We have one in West Hartford, so about 20 minutes. Yeah, oh, man. You know what? Uh, I haven't been to the West Hartford, but Michelle and uh, I think uh, Julian and Chloe have been to that location. Uh, Carlene, your thoughts on this? Divorce them. Divorce so you, them. You don't think there's any hope here? That just that yeah. story, grounds for divorce, leave, that's it? No. That is 100%. That is, a, that is just exposing her without her permission. Definitely divorce them. It's the same way where you can't change the stripes on a zebra. All right. Paint it white. I mean... <laughs> there are ways. Car- Carly, thank you. All black at this point. I'm sorry, say it again. I said I would paint them all black at this point. All right, thanks, okay. Carly, and have a great day. All right. Uh, una, dos. No, it's, it, it's, it's, it's Una. No, not Uno. Una. Oh, oh, oh. Una, <laughs> una in Bradenton. Una, you're on the MJ Morning Show. Welcome. Hey, thanks. Good morning, guys. Hey, How you doing? what would you do in this case? We're, we're great. What would you do? Um, I don't know about divorce, but I just, I just think it's totally wrong what he did. Yeah. Um, because you know he like he put her out there, and then it's not even just, um, the fact that, of what he did, but it's also I think based on principle about he lied about it because he asked her or he said something about it, and then you know and then he still did it anyway. So it's like deception, like going behind her back. Um. Just, just not cool. Yeah, this is certainly grounds for some couples therapy. Maybe not Sorry, divorce. Something. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if they're going to get that far, but uh, thank you for the call. I appreciate. It. I, I'll grab one more call on this. Uh, Andrew's still screening, but uh, Stacy up next. Stacy, you're on the MJ Morning Show. The only fan story. What would you do? What are your recommendations? Hi guys. Uh, Hi. So Stacy, what, what would you do? 
for divorce, yeah. 100%. That is like you have violated a principle of trust, period. In, in a most disrespectful way. I mean, he invaded this woman's privacy in a, like she has a fitness type of business. And this is behind her back? No. I mean, now you're interfering with possible other people that don't even know that this is on there. Possibly. Yeah, it's the same thing. Like, so everybody, everyone is saying the same thing. Uh, I don't think we've had any defense of the guy uh, with the secret creation of the OnlyFans page. Stacy, thanks for the call. Andrew's still screening calls, but i got to move on. But every single call, you're in disagreement with the, the women calling no, in? I just understand where he's coming from. I talked to my wife about making a foot page <laughs> on OnlyFans. Oh, stop. But for your feet? Yeah, no, no. Oh, sure. oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh my God. That'd be through the roof. Oh, my. You know what? I just, I just, I botched it again. Your foot page? What? No, I went right past the 745 teaser. Two, oh, shoot. Two days in a row. Son of a. All right, I'll just do it now at 8.37. Do, 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 do it man? live. Do it now. You know, we, we've just been so jammed and busy. We get on a roll. We get on a, a jelly roll, and I just I just lost track of time. Uh, so two days in a row, I, I teased this item, which I didn't get to at 7.45. So let me do it now at 8.37. What do you make out of this? This woman flew 1,500 miles to meet a guy that she'd been talking to online for years. So I guess they met online. They were talking online. I I, I guess they finally, they were texting. And she flies 1,500 miles and then gets ghosted. Oh, she got catfish. Listen, well, let's discuss. I've got a theory on what happened here. But this woman flies a, a long way to meet a guy she was talking to online for years. He was a no-show. River Blake, 23 years old, flew cross-country from Lafayette, Louisiana, all the way up to Rapid City, South Dakota. That's uh, that's where uh, Mount Rushmore is, right? Rapid City, mm-hmm. right? Is that uh, or, no, right? I, I don't know. It's close. Is that uh, yeah? It's right there. Rapid City. What, else is, what else is in South Dakota? Nothing. Uh, so she flies from uh, Louisiana. I wonder if Cage Investor has something to say about this. Well, uh, listen here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she gets for for venturing outside of the fine state of Louisiana to meet her men. So she should have stuck uh, with some guy in the bayou? Oh, yeah. She could have got herself a nice Creole Cajun boy. Met somebody in a crawfish boy? Uh, a little, little crawfish boy. Maybe <laughs> maybe make a nice fancy meal. Maybe make a little gumbo or etouffee. Maybe take her to a Tigers game. <laughs> Go Tigers. <laughs> so I'll take you to a Tiger game, Ms. Roxanne Wilder. <laughs> Ms. Roxanne. She says right. it was an eight-hour flight because she there were no flights directly from uh, Lafayette, Louisiana to Rapid City, South Dakota. So I, got my, I got my cousin Hank over there. He got himself a little, little plane. He couldn't take him there. <laughs> little, 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 little what? Cessna 172? 172. 172. <laughs> Fly right out of the bite. So, <laughs> she, got water she, wings on it. <laughs> she, 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 she flies eight hours to meet this guy. He didn't show, and then paid for the uh, overnight accommodations, and then had to buy a last minute ticket to then fly home since she was stood up and ghosted. I'm looking at her picture. I'm, I'm going to hold this up to MJ TV right now. She's attractive. She's a cutie, 23 oh, yeah. year old cutie pie here. Uh, very, very nice-looking woman, very attractive. Brunette, great face, uh, nice, uh, I mean, just just looks like a nice young woman. And she now says that they have not spoken since. So talk to this guy online, and I guess via text, for years. And I don't see where it says that she ever saw him in person or, uh, uh, you know, on, on, like, FaceTime or or WhatsApp or anything via video. River is a model from. Let me see? L- she's a look. Look at I her. I gotta see her. Look at her. Whoa. Okay, and hang on. It gets better. Look, look, let me hold up the second picture. Here's one of her modeling photos. That guy blew it. Well, hang on. You know, let me tell you what's going on here. This guy probably totally catfished. Probably sent her pictures that weren't. Yeah. The guy got cold feet. The guy probably 
is, you know, 500 pounds in his parents' basement, probably playing video games all day long, probably completely misrepresented. You know, who knows what his uh, thing was? And then here is the moment of truth and the meeting, and, and you know, she's expecting something after years of talking, and it's not going to be remotely close. So this guy's got one op. Well, you got a couple options. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm not 6'2 and 195 with uh, chiseled abs, a six pack, uh, you know, right off the cover of GQ. No, I'm like Chet from Weird Science after he's <laughs> turned into the blob monster. I mean, what? So you either say, you, you go for the sympathy play right. Right. and say, I'm sorry, this is me, or you just disappear, man, because it, there's no way. There's no way. You just, just got to go, go poof. Must have been horrendous looking. Yeah, but don't you put an end to this before she boards a plane? Apparently not. Uh, they spoke almost every day for years, five years. And apparently they had some mutual friends, so she thought that he was the real deal. Mutual online friends, it sounds like. Well, yeah, did any of the friends ever see this yeah. guy? <laughs> I can't help but to feel bad for this little Louisiana queen here. <laughs> right, but but she says they did FaceTime. Oh, she said they FaceTime a couple but, times. But, but we got sketchy internet down here in the bayou. <laughs> but it freezes up all the time. Uh, you know, did she just see like a part of the face? The whole face? Maybe did, he was holding it up to a poster. Did you not somebody see, else? Did you not yeah. see the body? Yep. Yep. I don't know. I, I, I mean, why would the guy ghost her? I mean, she is she's attractive. She's a good looking young woman. Yeah, she was second runner up in the Miss Alligator contest. <laughs> Damn. Bayou Queen. Third runner up. Yeah, and then <laughs> I guess this guy said, hey, he wanted a, her to fly one way and move in with him. And then she shows up and he doesn't. Yo well. Yeah. So, That's a terrible life decision to leave the fine state of Louisiana yeah. to go up there to South Dakota. How'd you meet your wife, Cajun? Cousin. <laughs> oh, it's your cousin? Yeah. Family family picnics. That's where you met your uh, your wife. First cousin. Yeah, first cousin. There you go. Ooh, have, have you guys have you guys seen the movie Love Hard? I mean, I did, but uh, you know, it, it's I, it's not it's it sounds kind of graphic, but no, it's it's really really cute. It's about a catfishing story where this completely this guy poses like a male model looking guy but really he's not at all and the woman comes out to meet him and you know it's just chaos ensues but it's really cute if you ever want to watch a catfishing movie turned like a romantic comedy so love a movie hard. once called love hard and it don't fit her outside, outside of Boise city uh, right, let me tell you what it was totally different uh, are there any adult theaters in louisiana in the deep south i, I don't know it's our third biggest gdp okay thank you very much uh cajun fester ladies and gentlemen on the thanks cajun uh mj morning show i like it when cajun stick around i'll stick around with you miss roxanne wilder <laughs> go tigers hey, go tigers. Uh, hey uh, quick question I, I brought this up a couple of times this morning a uh, quick little uh Little question for you, and you know we we don't ask much of you here on the MJ Morning Show. We just want you to listen and enjoy, and we're just here to entertain you. But I, I've got one question for you, and if you could just do me a favor, take a minute and send me an email. I'm just curious, just just curious about something. It is now eight forty five. Would you want the MJ Morning Show to end in about fifteen minutes? Would you want us to end the show at nine a.m. And then the 9 o'clock hour would be all music. We're gone. So it would just be all Q105 music in the 9 o'clock hour. Would you want that to happen? Or do you want the MJ Morning Show and all of our antics to continue in the 9 o'clock hour as we do? Because we go 6 to almost 10 o'clock, about 9.45 every day. All right, so the question is, do you want the show to continue in the 9 o'clock hour? Or what if... They decided that they're going to play all music beginning at 9 a.m. What are your thoughts on that? Do you want the show to go on in the 9 o'clock hour, or you want us to end at 9 o'clock? Send me an email. Just send me a quick email. Just, just curious. Just asking a simple question. If you've never emailed, this will take you one minute. Send an email to mj at mjmorningshow.com. mj at mjmorningshow.com. So drop me a note. Tell me your age whether you're male or female, and where you live, and whether you want the show to continue in the 9 o'clock hour, uh, 9 to 10, or you want us to end 
essentially in less than 15 minutes at 9 o'clock every day. What do you prefer? The MJ Morning Show continues for a fourth hour or we end it after three hours? What is your preference? Show goes on, show ends at 9, and it's uh, it's wall-to-wall Q105, uh, 80s, 90s, and more. L- l- just let me know. Send me an email, mj at mjmorningshow.com. That's mj at mjmorningshow.com. Again, age, whether you're male or female, so gender, and your preference on the show ending at 9 or continuing, and also tell me where you live. Uh, quick little note, it'll take you one minute Send the email to mj at mjmorningshow.com. All right, a couple of quickies here. This is a, oof, this is a revelation, man. This is a stunning, oh, my God, moment. Did you know that Nestle drumsticks are not made with real ice cream? What the heck are they made with? You so, know, hold on. I think every one of those, like... Treats like, like the like, frozen confectionery yeah. treats, ice cream sandwiches, yeah. ice cream bars are none of them are made with real ice cream. They're made with like some kind of frozen foam or something. <laughs> it's like it's a sweet frozen, like maybe more, maybe more like it's cool. made with it's made with good stuff. That insulation foam in a can. Have you ever seen those videos of somebody leaving an ice cream sandwich out in the sun and it doesn't melt? Well, a couple of things, and I I, I saw this like convergence of a couple of items over the last day. And I'm like. This is a sign. We got to talk about this. And remember, remember, uh, Chloe wanted me to get the mini drumsticks at the supermarket. Yeah. And they were like $10 for the little mini drumsticks. I'm like, no. Ice cream's expensive these days. Uh, well, it is. But listen, I'll, I'll go to Trader Joe's and get the, ever, you ever see the mini ice cream cones at Trader Joe's? I think those are real ice cream, actually. But there's a video that popped up in my feed and then I found a whole different uh, story that drumsticks, the Nestle drumsticks, aren't actually made with real ice cream. They can't call it ice cream. You know, there is dairy involved. Still delicious. Yeah, what do they call it? Uh, well, it's a, I guess it's just a, a frozen... Frozen treat? Yeah. So what is the drumstick actually made of? Well... You know, flavor, texture, consistency, uh, the fat comes from non-dairy sources. Drumsticks are made up of coconut palm and soybean oil, which is probably why you don't notice the lack of dairy source fat and why it's so hard to believe that they're not actually ice cream because they're all like chemically engineered to mimic ice cream, but it's not. I, how tough is it to make a, 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 a cone with actual vanilla ice cream inside? They're cost cutting. Yeah, well, that's that's what they're doing. Drumsticks are made with coconut palm and soybean oil. Uh, there's no actual ice cream. I mean, there are. I mean, this, this is re- insane. I mean, I would have thought that there's got to be some, you know, degree. And you know what happens to become ice cream? You have to have at least ten percent butter fat. That's the criteria to be labeled ice cream according to, like, the FDA and, you know, regulations. So you have to be at least 10%. And drumsticks, while they may be delicious, uh, it's like it's like a lab treat. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. it's, it's, it's a engineered treat. Yeah. Plant-based oils, but also... Um, that spawned this video where a guy left a drumstick out and it didn't melt. He had it out for nearly 24 hours. Listen to this. What you're looking at here is the aftermath of a drumstick ice cream cone that has been sitting out for 22 hours now. Um, this I set this out yesterday at 6 or 7 p.m. and... It's now 4.23 p.m. the next day. And this is the outcome. It, I mean, it. if you watch my previous video, you'll see how after about two hours, the ice cream didn't melt, or melt at all. So this is the outcome after almost 24 hours. And just think, your kids are eating this. Heck, I was eating it, but I will not eat it any longer. Oh, God. I will never eat these again. Oh, get off Sorry, here. drumstick.
<laughs> Sorry, Jumpstick. Yeah. I'll show you. Yeah. So, again, according to the FDA, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, real ice cream has to contain at least 10% uh, milk fat. And drumsticks don't meet that qualification. Now, there is some milk. There is some milk in the drumstick. Just a tiny little there, waffle of milk. There's a little cream. <laughs> just maybe a little, a little, <laughs> like, like an eyedropper. <laughs> a little. <laughs> so there is a little bit of milk, a little bit of cream, but it's a lot of other stuff. So I'm sorry to break the news because, you know, a drumstick is, you know, pretty delicious. Yeah, as long as they keep the little nugget at the bottom, I'm good. But I believe the Trader Joe's mini cones. Which we'd purchased numerous times. We have, you know, when I started making my own ice cream, I, I didn't really pick that up as much. But uh, those Trader Joe's mini cones are actually very, very good. Eight fifty-two at the MJ Morning Show. We have an hour to go, at least for now. Uh, so we, we 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 have a lot of stuff to get to in the nine o'clock hour. And remember, bring us into work with you. So when you arrive at the office or wherever you're going, whatever you do, make sure you keep listening to us in the nine o'clock hour. And you do it either on the conventional radio, 104.7 FM, or you bring us up on the apps. We're on all the major apps. Just search for Q105 Tampa Bay. Uh, your computer desktop, just go to mjmorningshow.com and click on the red button in the upper right-hand corner. It says listen live, and then boom. In seconds, we're coming out of your computer speakers. So you can continue listening to the MJ Morning Show here on Q105. And we're back in minutes. In fact, I think the best material of the day. I think Hal Herman's coming back. Uh, next time, <laughs> yeah, it's an encore presentation. What? The what? <laughs> Got a couple of encores coming up. All right, no, no. All right, but uh, MJ Morning Show back in minutes. Hey, I want to talk.
three. Uh, speaking of the band, uh, which includes the boy band uh, genres of uh, what? New Kids on the Block, like that. Um, uh, you got uh, 98 Degrees, uh, In Sync on the yeah. list. Yeah, so uh, the band boy genre, and right. we have New Kids on the Block tickets mm-hmm. to give away this hour. So speaking of the genre, we will uh, reward you with tickets to see New Kids on the Block with Paul Abdul and DJ Jazzy Jeff. Uh, no Will Smith. Mm. Maybe a cameo slap on the face appearance. Who knows? He might show up at the Amp in July. But uh, New Kids on the Block, Paul Abdul, DJ Jazzy Jeff, have your tickets coming up in just a matter of minutes. Listen, we'll tell you what number to be and uh, when to call in here on the MJ Morning Show. Uh, a couple of uh, items now, I probably want to talk about this in more depth tomorrow, Fester, but um, Froggy, your kids might be too old, but Fester and Roxanne maybe more. Uh, do you know who Bluey is? Yeah, of course. Bluey is probably one of the best kids shows on TV. It's yeah, a, Fester loves it. Isn't that Blue's Clues? No, 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 no. It's, no, it's, no, no. It's, no, 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 it's not Blue's uh, Clues. No, 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 no. We no. watch mafia movies, <laughs> right? No, but Blue, Bluey's a, a start him early. Bluey's an like, it's, yeah, I was gonna say, Bluey's an Australian cartoon. It's Australian, right? correct? Yeah. So, do all the characters speak with a uh, like a crocodile Dundee accent or an Australian accent? Yeah, yes. that's what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah. The younger sister is Bingo. Yeah, Bluey and Bingo are sisters, and uh, they have they have their family adventures and fun stuff. Right, so there are like two controversies now with Bluey. And I want to get into... Uh, oh, how can we say it like this? Bluey. <laughs> what? You do. You say it. You say it like, Bluey. Who? Me? You. I Bluey? Yes. There, you did it again. It's How else do you want me to say Bluey? Bluey. Like, you just have so much blah in it's, it. It's... Bluey. Just say, just say Bluey. Bluey. <laughs> do I do it like that? Uh, okay. Okay, uh, continue. What's the controversy? Well, there are a couple of things. Uh, some people think that they sent a message that... The last episode ever just ran? Hmm. And then there's another controversy where one of the young characters is put in the front seat of the car and they're too young to ride in the front seat? I mean, they are dogs. (laughs) But a cartoon dog's at that. Oh, it's dogs. Is Bluey ending? Parents are freaking out over the episode, the last season, or the last episode of the season... Uh, called The Sign. Yeah. And your daughter has seen it, right, Fester? My daughter has seen it. What is the age category for... <laughs> two to ten? Two, yeah, you know, two to ten. So your daughter's a little outside. Yeah. Because your daughter's 12, right? Hadley's funny. She's 12 going on 25 or she's 12 going on six. I mean, oh, right? She's, right. she's back well, and forth. Yeah. All right. You know, uh, Bluey's a great show. You should watch this show tonight. It's 28 minutes. Yeah. Chloe will watch it with you. But some people, what does it run on? It, it's Disney, Disney Plus. I don't have Disney Plus. Why not? Why not? I, because how many streaming services can you have? I'm not going to have $500 a month in streaming bills. You got to pick what's, you know, relevant and important. And I, I, I don't need Disney Plus. Well, then you're not and, watching it. And it's probably me that's making it a big money loser. That the fact that I'm not a subscriber. Yeah. Yep. Uh, who is it? Who, who's, who's the boss at Disney? Eisner? <laughs> Not no, I, no. no, no. Eisner came um, is, in the eighties. No, I, 90s. I don't know. No, uh, who, they they had some uh, somebody stepped down and then he came back. No, it's Michael, Roy Disney. Yeah, Michael Michael Eisner's back. He oh yeah. he came back. Yeah, I think he stepped down and, and, and that's why he yeah. came back because he said I could get the MJ account. Iger, Bob, Bob Iger, Iger. That's Iger. right. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, Iger. Iger. That's oh, right. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. Say. Well, listen, Iger Eisner. Hey, they're easy to confuse. Yeah. All right. So the current. Iger left, and then Disney kind of went to hell in a handbasket, and then he kind of came back, right? And they were like, so Bob, Bob, we need you. Bob Iger, not Eisner. Bob Iger is the current CEO. Anyway, so parents and kids, like, freaking out that some thought that they got the message that... <laughs> Bluey. <laughs> Just Bluey. Both that, of you. That Bluey mm-hmm. is going to end, and I guess there's no indication of that, and... I don't think it is, but people are freaking out. All right, let's bring this up again tomorrow, and we'll grab some phone calls from some uh, parents with young kids maybe tomorrow on this. All right, a couple of celebrity items. Uh, first one, local. Did you see the pictures of Eminem's daughter, Haley Jade? 
sitting on a boat in old Hillsboro Bay. I mean, the background is the shipyard. Did you see? <laughs> come on, you, you couldn't come up with a a, a better background. You know, there's a big story. Page six, New York Post, a whole story yesterday. Eminem's daughter, Haley Jade Mathers, showed off her physique in a white two piece during her bachelorette trip. Uh, I get it, here in Tampa. Tampa. Yeah. Oh God. Uh, listen, nothing wrong with that, but I I think I would have picked a better background. No, no, no. Give me the shipyard. You got mm-hmm. the, the shipyard and cranes in the background. Reminds her of Detroit. Yeah, yeah good point. <laughs> right by the yeah. Balm River Bridge. Uh, she's an influencer. That's her That's her occupation. She's an influencer. She is. Yeah. It's a nice boat. Yeah. Eminem's daughter, Haley Jade, is an influencer and a podcast host. And this says she's still on a bachelorette trip to Tampa. She's still here. Seven of her friends and her sister, Elena... She took to Instagram yesterday, so I, I guess they're still here because she posted the picture of she, uh, how many is on there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six, nine. Yeah, it's her, and her sister, and then uh, seven friends. Nine. Damn. On a boat in Old Hillsborough Bay, and you got the gray rusted Ironsides as some like tanker that's getting some pipe fitting done in the shipyard in downtown sure, Tampa. Are you sure it's not getting scrapped? I mean, I, look at this j- <laughs> jalopy of a boat we have. Uh, <laughs> it, it looks a little better than the one that hit the bridge in Baltimore, though. Barely, though. Yeah. Damn, uh, she definitely is the good-looking one in the bunch. So yes. uh, Haley Jade Mathers, Eminem's daughter, is floating around Tampa right now. She's got nice toes. Stand up. Stand up. Why are they all dressed like Selena? Has see, I wouldn't recognize her. I mean, if Me if, if I was out and about, I would have no idea what Eminem's daughter, who's uh, carousing around Tampa right now, I would have no idea what she looked like. Has anyone run into her? I, hey, I don't know if we'll get calls. Has anyone seen Eminem's daughter Haley Jade out and about in Tampa? Uh, where are they staying? Are they staying at the Edition? Are they? Have they been seen uh, on Water Street downtown? They're staying at that place where uh, Humpty Hump died. Yeah, oh. the, the Vista Inn on Bears Avenue. Yeah, <laughs> rock and roll uh, history. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right there. All, all the musicians stay there. Yeah. Did they find the fake plastic snap-on <laughs> nose on the nightstand at the oh, Vista Inn? Come on, they did. They did. Now, maybe may he rest in peace. Now people don't realize this. Digital Underground's Humpty Hump died a couple of years back at the Vista Inn on Beers. Right off of 275. You know what's right across the street? A Burger King. Mm. Oh, is that the one where the lady worked? Uh... No, it's the where he once got busy in a Burger King bathroom. Oh, oh, oh. Humpty oh. Hump. Yeah. Uh, hey, if anyone has spotted Eminem's daughter around town, because she, apparently she's here on on her uh, bachelorette trip. I, I know, She's getting married? If you put her in front of me and said, guess who this is? I would go a thousand guesses. I would never guess oh, it's Eminem's daughter. I'd, I'd have no idea. Uh, but if anyone knows and, and has run into her anywhere, 800-990-1047. 800-990-1047. If you've had any Eminem daughter Haley Jade run-ins around town, where are they dining? Oh, God. What are they doing? Who cares? All right, moving along. What a dummy. Haley Jade's not that No, bad. no, no, no. Oh. I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm moving. moving a transition. This, this is a transition. Mm. Jason Kelsey, Travis's brother, who recently retired from the Philadelphia Eagles. He lost his Super Bowl ring in a pool full of chili. What? Yeah, he was doing some chili wrestling deal for a podcast, and he lost his Super Bowl ring. Look at this headline. Jason Kelsey lost Super Bowl ring in pool full of chili during wild live podcast. Effing imbecile. So Th- that's what that's what it says in the headline. How could you not find it? This was for his podcast, the what the In the Heights or the Heights yeah, podcast. Uh, l- that's the one that he does with his brother. Let New me Heights. Let me read Whatever. the details here. It's all fun and this is from the New York Post. It's all fun and games until Super Bowl bling gets lost in a pool full of chili. What happened to Jason Kelsey lost his Super Bowl ring during the live New Heights show in Cincinnati last week where one of the events involves students securing a sock with championship-esque accessories along with the actual ring in two vats filled with chili, spaghetti, and cheese. 
Oh, they were doing the, uh, the Cincinnati. They were doing the skyline, like the chili. skyline chili deal. The worst of all the chilies. No, it's not. It's not the best. Uh, I I like the skyline chili experience. Mm. Yeah, once every decade or Probably so. Let me stop it. Uh, there was an unfortunateness, as you guys know. This game existed because I continuously lose my Super Bowl ring. I don't even know if Travis still knows this, but I legitimately lost my Super Bowl ring in this event. So it came off in the pool of chili. They had like a like a kitty pool of chili. So the way I read it was they had this big pool of chili where they had his ring wrapped in a sock. In a sock. And it was like somebody had to find it. I, but they also I, had other socks with fake rings in it. Somebody found it and put it in their pocket. Probably and pocketed and walked out with it. Yeah. yeah. That's because yeah. he told the story about how that's how, how where he keeps his Super Bowl ring in, in a, his drawer in a sock. In a sock. Mm. Yeah. Sounds so, like really entertaining stuff. Travis. Who's uh, his you know brother? Who's dating Taylor Swift? Never heard of him. You know, he uh, obviously they just won the Super Bowl again, and he, his brother Travis called uh, Jason an effing imbecile. Yeah, for Sounds- losing. Come on, bro. The, these Super Bowl rings are. I think they're like fifty grand a piece. They're yeah. not. They're not cheap. No, they're not. Was he going to call the jeweler and have another one made? Right? They're all handcrafted, right? You know, there's that company that makes these rings. I'm sure you can just order up another, you know, I don't know which championship it was. Uh, when was, the Philadelphia Eagles won the Super Bowl like eight years ago. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. eight, eight years six, ago. Eight years ago, right. like that. Yeah, so uh, Andrew says six years ago. Okay. I but, wish we can go a week without hearing about these two. And then, <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. And then there was some news that broke late last night. Uh, Kanye West apparently smashed a guy in the face. But Why? I, listen, it, it might be justified. Now, do I think Kanye West is off his flipping rocker? I do. I think the guy has got you know severe problems. But from what I've ascertained here, it looks like some guy grabbed his wife. Oh, and, that's no reason to slap somebody. Well, you know, and his wife, <laughs> you've seen all the pictures. She's dressed up in nothing. I mean, yeah, that is weird. What? Why does he do that to her? Or pr- she? allow it well whether she does it on her own or he coaxes her into it, you see pictures of kanye west and his wife walking around and she's wearing virtually nothing she you know it looks like sometimes she's wearing like a see-through crystal clear shower curtain i'm all for being sexy and i you know but she is a stepmother right like have a little bit of I don't, well i guess self-respect yeah i guess yeah. kim does it too i think kind she's of. classy it's their house they do it mm-hmm. yeah. welcome to america yeah so tmz reported uh, <laughs> last night about midnight hour time about midnight tmz posted that kanye west may have new legal trouble he's a named suspect in a battery report and cops are looking into the claims against him law enforcement sources told tmz police are investigating kanye or yay after cops said they were told he punched a man in the face late Tuesday night, but the guy he struck allegedly pushed or grabbed Kanye West's wife, Bianca Sensori. Yeah, you're going to get punched. I mean, if that's the case, that sounds like it might be uh, justified, Hmm. is what I'm thinking. Should have bit him with his titanium teeth. That's right. He's got that new titanium grill. Take out a chunk. Yeah. So then there was an update at 1.15 this morning. A rep for Kanye, or Ye, told TMZ grabbed as grossly inadequate as a description of what happened. Bianca was physically assaulted. They added the assailant didn't merely collide into her. He put his hands under her dress, directly on her body. He grabbed her waist. He spun her around and then blew her kisses. She was battered and sexually assaulted. Mm. In that case, yeah, I think Kanye West has all the right to just totally clock the guy in the kisser. Yeah, I think so. Grabbed her waist and spun her around. He's practically square dancing with her. Let him have <laughs> it. Grab your partner, do do Hey, Andrew, I don't know if you can find, maybe put the link up. There was a page six item. And yeah, I, I, just put the link up on, uh, uh, folks, give us a couple of minutes and we'll put the link to the story up on As Heard on the MJ Morning Show, on mjmorningshow.com. So mjmorningshow.com, and then you click on the box that says, as heard on the MJ Morning Show. And Andrew will get this up in a few minutes. But there's a little controversy. Actor, uh, act, you're not supposed to say actress anymore, so I try to self-correct in the middle. So actor, actor Megan Fox, except the Oscars. They still do Best Actress, right? Yeah. Best actor. And now it's time for best actor. Oh, and now it's time for best actor. So you got to differentiate between man and uh, and woman. But Megan Fox posted 
a makeup-free selfie, and like the internet and social media is divided. I'm looking at her picture with no makeup, and she is stunning. Yeah, she looks great. I think she looks better with no makeup than with the makeup. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about she that. looks fantastic. Here, look. Uh, here, here. Let me hold it up to MJTV first. All right, here we go. That's Megan Fox with no makeup and a selfie. You can see she's holding the camera. It's into the mirror in, in a bathroom. And she, Roxanne, are you putting makeup on as no. I'm as I'm talking about this? Funny, funny thing. I, I, the only makeup I have on today is eyeliner. I, I didn't do any of my other makeup. I have no like lipstick, Fox. no um, blush or any under uh, eye concealer. Uh, nothing. On. I look at Fester's computer screen. It's in color. Yeah. L- look at. I mean, that's beautiful. She, she's stunning. Uh, she says no makeup. Uh, I don't know whether there's just subtle stuff there, and she's trying to pull it off, but she looks great. I would like to point out that both of her thumbs are not photoed. Oh, yeah, Fester Uh, Fester doesn't like her thumbs. Look at that tiny waist on her. Dwarfs don't like her thumbs. Yeah, she had seven ribs removed for that. Did she? No, No, I think she was built like that. I'm kidding. No, she looks great. So I don't know why there's a controversy. And uh, on the Taylor Swift front... Really? Now USS, USF has to jump on the bandwagon with a Taylor Swift course? Yeah, I saw that. Oh, my on God. On what? How, well, Her economic impact. There are multiple universities now. Was it Columbia or Harvard or one of the sc- It was like an Ivy League school in the last couple of months. Remember the story came out? Oh, there's going to be a course on Taylor Swift. Why? She's a phenom. Oh, my God. And it's now... A bu- it's a business course. It's, it's any business stimulus course. Uh, Taylor you- Swift going to hit USF. I want to take it. Yeah, they, they've announced that there's a course. Uh, Stanford has one? Yeah, maybe it was Stanford. Yeah, so we got a, a course coming to USF you know, on, I guess, the... the impact of her career before usf has announced university of california berkeley university of florida university of delaware brigham young university which surprises BYU? That surprises me i didn't know the mormons are down with taylor um bowling green state university in ohio and uh university of miami yeah i don't i don't think we need taylor swift courses but the course and lectures will be focused on comparing taylor swift to literature like Shakespeare, Lord Byron, and Emily Dickinson? What the? What? She is a modern-day poet. Oh, my. Get out of here. She writes her own stuff. Uh, I, I, I'm thing... never, ever, ever getting back together. <laughs> what do you think? To that's... be or not to be? <laughs> that <laughs> never, is ever, the question. Never, ever, ever getting back together. Uh, I'm... Travis, therefore, wear out your wiener. Why is USF not jumping on this bandwagon? Go Bulls. Taylor Swift course. I, I I don't need it. Does she get paid for something like that? Yeah. Oh, and then she probably does. Yeah, that's a good question. No, why would no. she get paid for it? I no, don't know if there's no. just it's her life. Well, they're yeah. examining a body of work. It's, no, it's not, in the public domain. No, she's not getting paid for it. It's a university, well, I, and they're uh, well, if they're selling her records is like the textbooks. She's and missing stuff. out on an extra they're, revenue stream. No, they're not selling her records. <laughs> they're they're going to discuss her uh, economic impact and uh, you know how she compares to the literature. I. Which I'm sorry, I don't consider Taylor Swift literature. And then, did you see the Courtney Love, uh, Kurt Cobain from Nirvana's Widow? Courtney Love is in a whole bunch of crap with Swifties. Hey, I might be now that I'm not fawning over this new USF course that's coming. But Courtney Love says that Taylor Swift is not interesting or important. <laughs> oh, yeah. I saw that. Pole is way better than them. Yeah, and then uh, Taylor Swift. And then uh, you got all these Swifties that are like, uh, you know, issuing death threats to Courtney Love right now. Yeah, I'll take good. Courtney Love's band over Taylor any day. Yeah, I think I'm in the same category. Nine twenty two at the MJ Morning Show. We have new kids on the block. Paula Abdul and DJ Jazzy Jeff tickets. We'll give those away next. And the final chunk of the MJ Morning Show. You know, we didn't get to all week the whole uh, the Golden Bachelor. Controversy. It's a big deal. Yeah, it is. You know, I've had it in the pile all week. I just haven't gotten around to it. So the whole Golden Bachelor, pro- who watches? Why would you watch a subsequent one if you know what just happened to the first ever Golden Bachelor? All right, what's the controversy if you don't know? And then uh, I got a warning if you're shopping at a, a Target, a Walmart, or wherever. I've got a total, complete Cretan alert. And that's on the way in just a matter of minutes. 
If you are looking for a Ford car...
I have the tickets, folks. We have New Kids on the Block with Paul Abdul and DJ Jazzy Jeff. Going to be at the Amp coming up in July, and we have tickets. We'll give those away momentarily here on the MJ Morning Show on Q105. Uh, Been asking this question during the course of the morning uh, one more time today. Do you want the MJ Morning Show to continue in this hour? What if... We ended at 9 o'clock, and this hour did not exist, and it was just, you know, wall-to-wall Q105, 80s, 90s, and more. More music in the morning from 9 to the rest of the day? What if we did not do the MJ Morning Show? We just went from 6 to 9 every day, and uh, we're gone. This doesn't exist. Uh, Little question for you, and I'd like you to email me. Very simply, do you want the MJ Morning Show to continue from 9 to 10? Or would you like us to start playing music? We'd be gone. It'd just be, you know, just music, 9 to 10. Or do you want the show to continue every day in this hour? Send me a quick email. MJ at MJMorningShow.com. Just tell me uh, whether you're male, female, how old you are, where you're from, and if you want the show to continue with the 9 o'clock hour, our fourth hour, or if you're okay with the show just ending at 9 o'clock every day, or do you want the show to continue as is? In the 9 o'clock hour. Send me an email. It'll take you one minute. Send the email to mj at mjmorningshow.com. Just curious. Just curious what the audience wants. You want the show to continue or do you want just uh, wall-to-wall music in the 9 o'clock hour, which would be right now? So we'd be gone. Uh, Just send me a note. mj at mjmorningshow.com. All right, a couple of things. Uh, I have a continuation of just a lot of celebrity stuff today. You know, I mentioned uh, OJ earlier, uh, probably not in the best of light, but it has been now made official that OJ has been cremated. No, he was dragged through an hour airport, <laughs> according to Hal. Yeah, according to Hal Herman. No, it's official. Uh, attorney and others were present as witnesses as OJ was cremated. So that's a, a done deal. It has been confirmed. Also, some pictures have popped up of OJ just chilling and drinking beer just two weeks before he died. Dude, I bet you he faked his death like Michael Jackson. Uh, I mean, you know. You... Michael Jackson didn't fake his death. Yeah. Oh, you're Check one of the out ones... some of the videos of him walking out of the hearse or <laughs> thing. <laughs> what? The, when he died, they put him in an ambulance. They drove him to the hospital. 
He walks out okay. of the ambulance. There's no video of that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, show Just me. Like the... There's not a hanging midget in the Wizard of Oz. There is Just... not a hanging midget in the Wizard of Oz. Okay. That's been debunked like decades ago. Check out the video of Michael Jackson walking out of the ambulance. It'll shock your was face he, off. Was he moonwalking? Was, no, was he, doing he was the... under a blanket. It was basically like a <laughs> ghost. <laughs> Stop it. You laugh about it. Get out of here. That's Elvis that... is alive, too. He's the gardener at uh, Graceland. <laughs> That's not true. So look at the pictures, bro. Uh, this, the crap that Froggy believes, all the conspiracy stuff. Uh, this is actually a sweet story. They're shooting a Law and Order episode in Manhattan in a park. They're shooting Law and Order SVU earlier this week. And it's Mariska Hargitay, who I think is phenomenal. I think she's just tremendous. At what? Acting? Acting. I think she's a beautiful woman. I think she's a great actress. I, I She's just likable. Her For me, her Q score is 197. Yeah, acting like yeah. a cop. No, I like Mar- I like Mariska Hargitay. I've never seen one episode. So, get out of here. Not one right. episode. So, listen Sorry. to this. A little girl lost her mother and saw Ice-T and Mariska Hargitay in the park with their badges on. They're shooting a scene. There are camera crews everywhere. The girl runs up to Mariska Hargitay, this little girl. I lost my mommy thinking that Mariska Hargitay. <laughs> a real cop. Guess what? Mariska shut down production for like 20 minutes while they located the girl's mother. And what sprang a, into action. What she, a diva, dude. She, what? Shut down production? Who does she think she is? Come on, that was this is beautiful. She's, she's a star of the show. So Mar- She is. She can do whatever she wants. Oh, she is? I didn't know So that. Mariska Hargitay shooting Law & Order with uh, Ice-T in the park. Yeah, this happened at the uh, Ann Loftus Playground up in uh, Fort Tryon Park. Is that the, I think it's the Bronx. Is where I think I, I think if you're on the Henry Hudson, I think you drive right by that. I was at a boat ramp with Big Lou one time, like 10 years ago, and a little kid walked up to us lost. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. We just walked away. So this little girl got separated from her mother, ran up to Mariska Hargitay because she was in her, you know, her pantsuit, her detective, you know, SVU pantsuit. Mm-hmm. And she had the like the, the badge on the waist. And the little girl didn't notice, I guess, that like cameras and lights and all kinds of production staff thought Mariska was a real cop and uh mariska's like well let's go find mommy oh yeah is this she the one something just happened to her oh her dog got murdered right oh, was it her oh that's terrible oh no well, you did the story no no that was no. Uh, somebody else that was uh angie um, not angie Harmon. oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah no, angie no, it, angie um no, that was Mariska. No, it was no. An, it was another SVU star. Yeah, it was it was Angie though because I remember thinking uh, that day was Angie Harmon, well, and you're well, like, no, it's can, Angie. Can you look it up? Yeah, yeah. Who, who, it was Angie Harmon. What was it? It Angie was Har- Angie yeah. Harmon. Details oh, about Angie Harmon's yeah, dog. Yeah, some guy, some guy of? shot Angie Harmon's dog. We did that a couple of weeks ago. You thought Angie Everhart? That's right. Thank you, Fester. I'm I'm so confused. Yeah, witnesses told People Magazine the little girl was completely oblivious that they were filming, and that it was Mariska Hargitay and Ice T. Uh, and the girl runs up. They were, I guess they were shooting the final episode, which will run next month in May. You know, they turn those shows around fast. Mm-hmm. They become experts. They can, like, shoot a, a, a Law & Order SVU, uh, edit it and ready for They can do it in, like, a, a week or so, a week and a half. They can get the thing all ready to run. So they were shooting earlier this week the, the final episode for the season finale, the 25th season of Jeez. SVU. Yeah, 25 seasons. Now, is they, that the original Law and Order? No, no. That's, How long has no, that no, been on? SVU is not the original. SVU is Special Victims Unit. Exactly. Yes. Interesting. Uh, mm. And they they found the the girl's mother, and then you, there are pictures of the little girl. And did Ice T arrest her mom for being a ne- neglectful parent? No, but Ice T entertained her with some terrible no. rap music from the nineties and eighties. How do you count no, rules? No, Ice T found crack in mom's wig. <laughs> uh oh. Yep. You're under arrest. Turn the pat down. And, so, it. and then uh, Ice T tried to sell her some uh, auto uh, mode of warranty product. <laughs> yeah, this is Ice T. I'd like to talk to you about your car's extended protection warranty. Exactly. Sounds like yeah. yeah, I do. A, I do a hell of an Ice T impression. I thought that was a very nice story. And then Roxanne, why is there a Titanic story coming around mm. all these years later? It's so obscure, right? I mean, it just came back around, and it's with my favorite drug to reference on the show. Uh, does <laughs> Does uh, our buddy, Mr. Titanic, does he know about this? I'm sure he does. Yeah, I do. 
Titanic. <laughs> yeah, our buddy uh, J, uh, JD. JD. Yes. Yeah, for Jack, Jack Dawson. Dawson. <laughs> yeah, JD, Jack Dawson. Now, our buddy locally who has the largest collection of Titanic on VHS, I wonder if he knows that all these years later, that Canadian police, is that the RCMP, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, mm. eh? Eh? They have ordered the release of more information about the infamous Titanic PCP chowder incident. It was angel dust. Yeah. What the? Yeah, it, it was seafood chowder spiked with angel... You can keep talking yeah, okay. over the intro of the music. You don't, you don't have to stop dead <laughs> but, in your tracks. But the way that you played it, you were so dramatic. You're like, <laughs> you're like, uh, so let me speak over the music. The seafood chowder was spiked right, with angel go ahead dust. And, and hit the intro though. Okay, yeah, you that was hit, good. You didn't, you didn't <laughs> hit the good. intro. <laughs> so, all right. you're a disc jockey. <laughs> oh, I, I never mind. I was confused. Um, but anyways, it, anyway, it was like. So yummy that people were eating three and four bowls of it and getting messed up. Yeah, sure. So during the filming in August of 96, at least 50 cast and crew members, including star Bill Paxton and director James Cameron, were dosed with angel dust. Dude, I have a story that says that, 80 people. That's Well, this, this says 50. So, well, no, this says, this says at least 50. That I never knew this, that somebody spiked some seafood chowder. With angel dust? With PCP? Kathy Bates had like 12 bowls of it and got real <laughs> sick. Like the, the unsinkable Molly Brown. <laughs> oh, she was She's unsink- like, give me another bowl of this stuff. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> oh. Manny Wilkes. <laughs> At first, James Cameron thought that it was red tide. You know, that people were eating the shelf, the, the seafood chowder. He's like, oh, happens. it's red tide. That's why everyone's sick. But then, they're, then they were tripping. But this was a real <laughs> actual event. Happened during filming on the future blockbuster. They were dosed with angel dust that somebody put in the soup in some kind of seafood chowder. Yeah, some people think because everybody hates, well, a lot of people don't like James Cameron because he's <laughs> difficult. A story told on more than one occasion by the late Paxton. Oh, that's right. Bill Paxton's dead. I forgot. Oh. I love yeah, him. Yeah, I know. He was a great guy. Um, well, great actor. Well, yeah, likable. Uh, and he was, I guess, telling the story up until he died about making, uh, you know, or telling the story. He was, you know, doing the talk show rounds. And, you know, everyone thought maybe, was this urban legend or this really happened? But apparently James Cameron made himself throw up to get the drug out of his system. Good idea. Is it a good idea? I don't know. So now more information about the chowder poisoning during the filming of Titanic in 96 is due to come to light. It seems that Nova Scotia's Information and Privacy Commissioner has ordered Halifax police to (laughs) unredact at least some of the reports onto the investigation which was closed without naming the culprit in 1999. So they don't know who spiked the chowder? I think it was Bill Paxton. Helena Hutchinson. Or Hutchinson. Stop. She was a cook before she was an armorer. Uh, No, no. No, no, no. No, no. the the armorer. Helena Hutchins is the cinematographer that got shot on the set of Rust. Oh, Oh, all right. The armorer is... uh, Gutierrez Reed. Yeah, Hannah Gutierrez Reed. Hannah Gutierrez. Yeah, she did it. Way to mess that joke up. Um, So so I guess... I guess Bill Paxton was sitting in the hallway next to this other guy, a set director, enjoying his buzz, and they were watching Grips going down the hallway doing wheelies in wheelchairs because they were so messed up. On PCP, on yeah. Angel. I saw some cop episodes where they were, like, all wigged up. There's mm-hmm. one, I think, episode of Cops, or I don't know what it was. Let's but see. I think I saw it. There was a guy. Well, there's one in the mm-hmm. barbershop. I there's didn't see there's that. a maniac that's, like, ripping his clothes off in a barbershop, but he's all frigged out on PCP. Yep. Then there's another one where the guy is naked walking down a street and like 15 cops try to tackle him and he like throws them all off of it. It's like insane. I think I saw that naked guy. Was he in Miami? I saw the naked guy I, and then they try to take him down with tasers. Nothing happens. Yeah. I also heard Kathy Bates again uh, <laughs> yes. rip her dress off and molested the violin player. So, Please stop. The big question, uh, Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio yeah. were not on set that day. Uh, so they did not have the drug-laced... Fish soup. They're my number. They're my number one suspect. I'd like to see Celine Dion on Angel Dust. What about you? (laughs) I'd like her to do this song on Angel Dust. What do you think? 
maybe that'd be good treatment for her frozen body syndrome or whatever she mm. has. Yeah, oh, it can't hurt. Yeah. All right, a couple of quickies here. The Golden Bachelor. Does this wreck? Any future potential for the Golden Bachelor? So the story came out days ago. I just didn't get around to it. That the Golden Bachelor contestants, they're getting divorced. So I mean, that was fast. Well, what do you expect? It's freaking reality television. How can you really put together a marriage that's going to remotely last more than a a blink when you're on a reality scripted freaking television show? Yeah. So Teresa Nist is now talking about the divorce from Jerry Turner. Yeah, put a message uh, earlier this week on Instagram. Nist fell in love with Turner on The Golden Bachelor. Yeah, sure, that's not contrived. There's no pressure there. Yeah, that's true love. Yeah, they uh, fell in love uh, last fall, tied the knot, television wedding, uh, I guess earlier this year. And now it's been announced that they're getting divorced. What a shocker. You know, I thought this no. was going to last. You know what? I, I'm i just blown away. You I, know what, I, though? A couple of these marriages work out. Remember the first one? The yeah, first the, bachelorette? Uh, uh, Tristan. Trist, yeah, and she married that firefighter oh, from firefighter. Vail. Yeah, yeah. He, he was a firefighter in Vail. We spoke. Yeah. We used to speak to her. Oh, we did. She was what a runner-up for season one. Yeah. And we used to right. speak to her when she lived in Miami. Then she became the Bachelorette. Right. And then she was she, a little blonde, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. She got married. They've been married now for twenty yeah, years. Yeah. You know what? I think they are still married. I think he might still be a Vail firefighter as well. Yeah. So I was watching that show, Love Is Blind, on Netflix, and they had yeah. the reunion show, and they had in the crowd like eight couples that have made it for years now. All right. So there, sometimes it works out. All right. There are two things that I want to quickly blow through, but uh, I'm not going to be able to get to it entire. So we'll push this off till tomorrow but i just want to just warn all the women out there there is a creepy creepy photograph and a creepy arrest here of a 21 year old in north carolina thomas elliott 21 a volunteer at eastern elementary school was seen crouching down and pointing a camera up a shopper's skirt at target in north carolina you. Uh, ladies, wow. please be careful of your surroundings. Any creepo guys that are creeping on you and getting way too close to you, they could be trying to shoot up your skirt. So please be aware of, of your surroundings. People are so brazen. I don't want you to be uh, violated. And someone snapped a picture of this guy, and you can see him on the floor crouching down. And while the woman is looking at something on a lower shelf, yeah. and he gets behind her and is, like, just holding his camera up her skirt to take pictures. Yeah. This was at a Target in North Carolina. Happened earlier this week. So uh, I just don't want to see any of our uh, female listeners violated by having some cretin creep take pictures of you. That's uh, horrific. I didn't, I didn't get to the Uber story. Yeah, I'll get to the Uber story a little later on. And uh, we'll leave you with a prize. We'll leave you with a reward. If you would like to see new kids on the block, Paula Abdul and DJ Jazzy Jeff at the Amphitheater in, on Friday, July 19th. Now's your time. We'll take caller number 30, 800-990-1047, 800-990-1047. Caller 30, you'll win tickets to see NKOTB and Paula Abdul. Good luck. From the MJ Morning Show here on Q105. Folks, we'll see you back here uh, tomorrow, Friday show. And today's Thursday, right? Yeah, a mm-hmm. Friday show tomorrow. Uh, if you need to email me, I've uh, requested a couple of things. My email is mj at mjmorningshow.com. And uh, that Chloe video of Chloe, first video after her ER visit, and my Chipotle go to the store versus Uber Eats comparison. That video is like, uh, I think, knocking on 11,000 views already. So check that out on my Instagram at Certified MJ Radio. See you back here tomorrow, folks. And let's be careful out there. Ah!